really want something to do with my Sunday nights. You got something for me? Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. Guess when you thought there was nothing left for you to do with your night The Revolver Podcast, Mama Hot Flash, crew is hot, always doing you right With a fresh take on gaming weekly, PCs, consoles, and handhelds mm-hmm. Bump what you heard since birth on this earth, we know that the future belongs to the nerds Revolver Live, what you say? Revolver Live, every Sunday at 6 Bringing that gaming magic to your life Doing it live on Twitch to show that you don't want to miss Be sure to subscribe, crack yourself a brew If it work, are you who now? You can join the crew for the ride Xbox, mobile, and Topics around the nation to gaming rigs, headsets, hardware, and PlayStation. Shout out to Joe. Can't you see him glow? Token brother brought the flow. Now it's time for the show. Let's go. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today I'm joined by three of four of the best guys I Ah! A strong start. <laughs> strong start. <laughs> I blame six percent packet loss. <laughs> what Inside happened? Well, you're good. you're good. You're good. You're back. You're good. You're back. Go with it. Just run with it. Today, I'm joined by three of the four, three out of four of the best guys I know. Briar Rabbit, the King of Destiny. What's going on, man? I'm doing great, man. I went to my uh, wife's uh, high school reunion last night, and I am hungover. They were playing. Hung- Listen, they had this big screen there, and they were playing uh, music videos from, like, the late 80s and 90s all night. The best And at music. first, I'm like, this is the lamest thing ever. After about four beers, I was like, yes, this is amazing. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can see Brian now. Had the time of my life. <laughs> Karaoke and shit. I started, I started tweeting each video that came up, and then we got Rickrolled live at the, <laughs> at the reunion. They literally played... Uh, uh, they were going to give you up live. It was hilarious. <laughs> that sounds like, hey, look, man, I'm an older guy. That sounds like a great time to me. All right, man. How I'm authentic happy. was it, though? Did you see anyone get an overpants hand job behind the bike shed? Did it happen? Uh, negative. Bleachers? Not Under really the bleachers? A high, not really a high school from them, really, was it? <laughs> yeah, man. They've grown up, Gary. Mm-hmm. They've grown up and, and went on to do things and become somebody. Speaking right. of Gary, what's going on, man? How you feeling this week? I'm feeling fresh. Fresh as a daisy. Fresh. Speaking of fresh, we went fishing yesterday. Caught nine bass. And I feel like I, I actually achieved something. Last week, didn't catch not a one. Yesterday, nine. So I'm feeling just as fresh as you, if not fresher. Good to I'm see you this like week. This is the, the beastly fisherman now. It's not, not the beastly gamer anymore. You spent more time fishing than you have playing games. And that, that's yeah. not true. Destiny still has me by the balls. And as soon as we got back from fishing, we went straight to Destiny. Speaking <laughs> of Destiny... This is our friend and alumni of the Beastly Thought Show, who is not Ryan Wilson. You guys might be confused. <laughs> he, he does have that similar swag. He has the beard. He has the cap. But our good friend, Inner Black Ninja, has joined Revolver Live as a guest this week. Mr. Inner Black, how you feeling, my friend? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you for uh, allowing me to stand in for Wilson also. Uh, you, you're you're a great guy. Uh, actually, guys, Inner Black Ninja has been playing a lot of Destiny with me. We played for about two hours uh, earlier today, about an hour ago. We were playing together, and we've been just hanging out and kicking it. I've known this guy for a number of years. Big time gamer, buys every console, buys every game, and and probably doesn't have time to play it. And just like me nowadays, what just we in case. Do is we got to get we got to get Wilson and Inner Black Ninja in the same place at the same time to prove people believe it. Yeah. Yeah. To prove that they're Can't not happen. the same guy. DNA <laughs> tests and shit. Yeah. It's like Batman and Bruce Wayne. I, I don't know. I'm like what's going on here? <laughs> Revolver live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics. You can be a part of the show by submitting your topics for consideration at revolver at gmail.com. Again, that's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. Twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's YouTube channel and my channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable like, to see the. Beastly, I feel like we should start being honest and say that we go live every Sunday at 6 6 8 9. <laughs> 6 change. We go live every Sunday after 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern <laughs> at twitch.tv forward slash Brian Rabbit. If you're unable to see the live feed 
or the video format, you can now find the podcast in podcast form at iTunes, Podbean, or wherever you do your podcasting. And with that, welcome to Revolver Live. This is episode 12, right, guys? Sure it is. Yes, episode 12. Sure it is. And, you know, uh, Revolver Decides, episode 12. So we just decided it. Welcome to the show, guys. Let's have some fun. What's going on, fellas? Yo, be sad. I like the turn back cap. That's a new look for you, man. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate you look like it. A, you look like a super thick back catcher. <laughs> <laughs> Strike. Well, you've yeah, joined man. the Nation of Islam, one of the two. I don't know. From this angle, it kind of does look a little bit like a... Assalamu alaikum. I think you get... <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you, brother. <laughs> don't tell nobody. Yo, BC, right? we got to raid this week together. How fun was that? All right. Uh, I told the guys during the pre-show that as of this moment, Destiny is my favorite game. Destiny 2. And Destiny 1 was probably just as good in its own way, but I didn't give it the chance that it, it honestly deserved now that I'm seeing the fruits of my labor. Uh, we did complete the raid. We did it last, thir- was it Thursday? Yeah. I want to say yeah, Thursday we, we did it. And... um. It took us five hours, and it was one of the most rewarding video game experiences I've ever had. Uh, going into it, we, we actually went halfway through it before the week prior, and Briar just hit me up on Twitter. He hit up the guys on Twitter and said, you guys want to do the raid tonight? And I was like, holy shit. We got home, and, and we got down on it, and it was a work night. But uh, I it was stayed up. a work up. night. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, you, okay. <laughs> <laughs> for, for people uh, who work, it was a work <laughs> night. Well, look. Keep, keep in mind, I'm normally in bed at 10 o'clock, and it was 12.20 by the time we got done with the raid. So, yeah, it was one of those rough rough mornings for me. But it was uh, very, very rewarding, Briar. Uh, I feel like I made so many good friends. I met Gary's brother, who's actually a nice man from the UK who treats me with love and dignity. Uh, is it Was it Hugo, Briar? Hugo, Hugo, Hugo Rooney. Adopted. Was he, he was adopted with us brother. the week before. Was he with us? I, I oh, believe yeah. he was. Yeah, you're right. He had to he had to he had to exit a little bit early. Yeah, but we, we kind of had like a rotating cast. Yeah, two people had to leave during this uh, five hour venture, and uh, I feel like definitely doing things like the raid they build real tangible relationships. Yeah. I've heard you say that before, Briar, and the guys we beat it with. Uh, of course, we play with Skinny. Uh, Hugo, and I want to say, I can't remember the, the, the other guy's uh, name. King Life Train, who's in chat, actually helped us out for the Night last Train. Boss. Night, Night Train. Train. <laughs> Night Train. Yes. Uh, JJ Molina came in for the last boss. I feel like he was actually critical to our success yeah. because uh, this was actually my second, no, it was my third completion of the raid overall. And I think it'd been two or three weeks since I actually did the raid. So I had, I was a little bit. Rusty. I was a little bit sketchy on some of the details about that last Callus fight, the the final boss, and I really wanted to do the darkness zone, which I had not done before. Uh, so JJ Molina, I think, came in huge because he was very experienced and knew exactly what we needed to do. Um, it went really well, though. I mean, it, you said it did take five and a half hours, but that was with some goofing around and with you know we had to make some roster changes. We took some breaks had. as well. Yeah. We took some breaks. Yeah. You know? Um. And that's the kind of thing that if you continue to do a raid with the same group of people night after night or week after week, it's going you to cut easy. it down tremendously because you, you end the learning curve and everybody just kind knows, of their, knows role. their role. Exactly. Knows their role and is able to just execute. you, And you stop having to talk about mechanics almost all together. And you end up just busting on each other for two hours, which is really fun. <laughs> you Most know, uh, each if, other if, for two hours is always fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, we were we went to the uh, store yesterday after we got back from fishing, and Kate mentioned a moment uh, during the raid where you're running past tons of enemies, and they're just standing there, kind of on this line, all these cabal just looking at you. Yeah. And once you get up t- toward the door, one person in the raid always turns around and shoots at the cabal to to get them to go. Uh, you know, aggro against the rest of the team. And that person's always Briar Rabbit. And <laughs> and she said that she was watching him do it. And she knew he had done it the week prior. And so she's, Kate's a very fast hunter. She said uh-huh. it, she made it, her, her point was to stay as close to you as possible 
because she knew that once she got there, you're going to turn around and shit over the rest of the team. And yeah. she said she was right next to you when you did it. And so it's good to see that you're making a lasting impression. If you ever play the raid with Briar, watch your back. Yeah, I will Briar. absolutely fuck you if I can. Yes, you will. <laughs> if I see Dave the opportunity, there's no doubt that I'm going to take that opportunity and I will wipe the whole team to do it. <laughs> I forget who it was, but Kate said he couldn't even get that to us. <laughs> because Briar... I think that, oh, that was um, that was uh, uh, Hope seventy six. Hope yeah, seventy six oh, was on our oh. team. He said, "What's going on?" <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> so Briar is a dangerous uh, player to have on your team. He's great at the game, but he will take he will take those moments to make you feel it. Yeah, <laughs> I had a Beastly. I had a lot of fun that night. Question for you: uh, you had, Did you do any of the raids in Past Destiny or no? I did. Uh, I did the original raid, and I did. Um, what's this, the the first DLC that came out? Uh, the Dark Below. Uh, Dark Below. Crota's Crota. End. Yeah. Crota's End. Yeah, we we did Crota's okay. End too. Yeah. I remember that done... Crota's End. Crota's End. We got our raid team got good enough that we could like three or four man that raid. And uh, one night, I noticed that you and I believe it was you and Kate were on. So I invited you guys to the raid, even though you were super low light level. So you guys came into the raid. And all the uh, all the enemies just had red question marks. Yeah, and like, Beastly, why? yeah, Beastly or Kate actually shot at them. They would actually do like zero damage. So they basically just stood in the back and just watched yeah, us beat waited. the raid, and then got all the rewards for it. But I that thought was it, awesome. It was, it was interesting enough, you know, just because they hadn't been there yet. But in this raid, I gotta say both of you were amazing. But I gotta give props to your wife. Me too, man. Kate. Kate was balancing a newborn baby on her, on her, boob. On her leg at <laughs> breastfeeding and carrying us through the darkness zone. <laughs> like, she was killing it. Uh, she wasn't streaming that, was she? You can get in trouble for that. <laughs> yeah, she, she's like, not as far as I'm concerned, I want Kate on every raid team I have. Um, and be just so imagine when too. she doesn't. Just hey, imagine when she, Thanks. Just imagine her when she doesn't have a kid on her nipple. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And, and the funny thing about the raid was after we did the raid, uh, I talked to my sons and, you know, my boys are 15 and 16 and kids will believe what parents tell them. I told them that my house got raided and uh, I sent you guys the audio and I, I told my son the police came to our house. They raided our house. It took five hours for them to get done. My son sound, you know, terrified and, and stricken with grief. They're like, Dad, are you OK? You know, what happened? I said it was, you know, it was me. I mean, it was one black guy, a blonde chick and four dudes. And after they got done raiding the house, they didn't find any uh, contraband. They were out in front taking pictures, you know, taking pictures of their team and stuff. Because we did that when we finished yeah. the raid. Briar said everybody posed. And we took some pictures, but I it was a, a great, in. it was a great uh, uh, experience, Briar. And I want to do a raid every week, if not two. I'm yeah, working I think, on my. I think we should schedule something like every Wednesday night or something. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm down. Yeah, we go in every week and um, make it happen. I'd like to. I'd really like to get Gary and Justin in there too. I'd yeah, like Gary. to finish it. I've been no. in there three times and I haven't finished it yet. So, oh man, you got to do it, man. It's so good. What's, it's the, so hang up? It What's the hang up, Ninja? Uh, uh, the hang up is uh, flaky people or uh, my. I play with a lot of people with children and their children are on our team and then those children have a bedtime. Me, I don't have a bedtime. Damn. <laughs> so, it's like yeah. then half of our team is gone. So, wow. Yeah, uh, we got to get you in there. Uh, at least go in there with Briar and some of the elites. But yeah, it was a, a great experience, Briar. It's something that I want to do every week. I can't wait to see what they come up with next. That a lot of people say that you know they like the other raids more. This raid is just awesome to me. I love every mechanic that's used. Uh, I love the difficulty curve. You know, once you learn your particular role, it just becomes so much easier. Uh, yeah. and, and I I just can't wait to do it again. It's it's a whole lot of fun. Yeah, I, I think I still prefer Vault of Glass, the first Destiny raid. I, I think it's still my favorite. Uh, but this one may be my second favorite now. I, I really do enjoy it. I, it gets a lot of flack for people don't like the stealth section with the dogs. Um, but once you've learned that section, it's really not that hard. And it's it's very different than any other part of any raid we've had. It's kind of similar to uh, in the Vault of Glass where you had, the, you had that little stealth section. But it's much more interesting. It's much more fun than that. Um, and I like the final boss fight. I think it's an interesting mechanic that you get split up into two teams. And if anybody fucks up. It's a it's fight, a so everybody has to perform in that fight, and I like that. You you can't, I'm sure you can if you're good enough, but it's not a situation where you got two or three guys that just carry people through the raid, you know? And I, I like that. I like everybody to be involved. Because like you said, it's a team-building exercise, you know? Yeah, it is, By the man. end of a raid, you feel closer to the people you did it with. 
And I, I really like that. I was at a photo shoot this uh, morning, and people were asking me um, why I like Destiny so much. And that's what I told them. It's like it's because you do these things with the same people over and over again, you start to build these relationships, and then it's almost less about the game as it is about those relationships and, you know, seeing those people, you know, every time you raid or every time you play Trials of Osiris, or, you know, like that kind of thing. I had a experience on Friday uh, where uh, Sweep the Legs and I were just kind of messing around with uh, Nightfalls, and then uh, we invited Story Machine on, um, and he wanted to do some Trials of Osiris, so we brought in another guy, and the last guy we had on, he just was kind of complaining the whole time. Um, and I'm, I kind of told him, you know, like, it's okay to be critical about the game, but if you're just going to complain the entire time we play, like, get the hell out of here. It, it's not, not yeah. so much get the hell yeah, out of here. It's, it's just like, you're just kind of, you're lowering the fun factor. Like we understand that there's the morale, problems with yeah. the game, but it's just not as much fun. Um, so we decided to change the topic to, you know, like, uh, would you, would you have sex with big bird if the opportunity, <laughs> presented itself and then all of a sudden the fun factor trip. of trials was, trials of osiris to get way up yeah man we drew the line <laughs> at elmo i think elmo was the, the the taboo card there big bird was acceptable oh god <laughs> the, thing is, the way we figured it was you know it's not so much big bird being attractive but you've, you've fucked a lot of women probably in your life but you ain't yeah. never fucked no you're not big proud bird. of all of them it's a once in a lifetime <laughs> thing you know yeah i mean the rest of your life you get to say Every time Sesame Street c comes on, you get to say, "I hit that." I hit that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds, sounds like a, it sounds like an epic T-shirt. You lean over, I'm you lean over bird. to the three-year-old on the sofa that's watching it with you, and you go, "I fucked Big Bird." You know, just scar them for life. Done. Oh God! Thank God my kids don't watch Sesame Street. Why not? <laughs> why don't they watch Sesame Street? That's the problem. Well, look, it doesn't matter about the why. All all I know is right now they have no idea what the hell you guys are talking about. Thank God. <laughs> they will. Once they start playing Destiny, they end up in my raid team. They go learn fucking Big Bird over here. <laughs> they go learn fast. <laughs> you a fool, man. Oh shit. Ah, uh. <laughs> oh, good times. Good, good times. All right. So, would you guys like to get on with today's topics? I would. I we would. have to. We have to. All right. Uh, would you like to get us started, Mister DS? Not my topic, but I will pass it over to Not Wilson over there, um, who can hit us up with the first. Going to say actually, um, big big shout out to to Inner Black Ninja Justin for yes for it's not only come to the show, but he's actually done fifty percent of the work for us. So we're There's hiring like three help. Three of actually, the topics this forward. week. <laughs> three of the topics are fantastic topics that Great. are coming from him. So yeah. if you guys like it, please show him some love in the comment. Hit up his YouTube channel because you know th this. Oh, stuff YouTube! Is, I'm done with YouTube. Done with I YouTube. don't do YouTube no more. Twitch. No more. No one does nope. YouTube. Now. I only do Twitch now, so don't That's hit it. me up on YouTube. <laughs> well, Straight have Twitch. We ever, I think this topic actually is is uh, you know have we ever had respect for YouTube rather than have we ever gained respect for YouTube? Do you want to hit us up with the uh, <laughs> the topic? Uh, have you ever lost respect for a company or developer based on their practices? Like uh, for instance, the reason why I brought this topic up is because recently Nintendo did that whole thing where they're um, not allowing people to stream on YouTube their uh, games, whether it be the Switch, whether it be the SNES Mini or whatever the case may be. And to me, I'm a big Nintendo fan, as you guys all know. This is kind of uh, a big hinder to me. It, and it's like, when when are they going to push that over to Twitch or push it over to, you know what I'm saying, other different uh, platforms where people are streaming. And I, I, I think it's know a, that, actually. You can't yeah, you stream can't. Twitch games on YouTube? Not unless you're partnered with, like, if you do their, yeah, like, whole, have the, yeah, Nintendo, yeah, yep, their whole, like, uh, uh, handshake, as I say, handshake, um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're full of shit, man, in my eyes, they're full of shit, because they're, the way I look at it is, look at PUBG, look at how successful PUBG is, you know why that's successful, is because people are playing their fucking game, and people are being able to see it, people see it, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, for people who don't know on YouTube, if you want to, post Nintendo video uh, of you playing a Nintendo game or you want to post like gameplay of Nintendo, you have to get a partnership through Nintendo. With Nintendo. And then you share revenue through your YouTube channel with new Nintendo. And it's a high percentage yeah. that they take as well. 
Um, so that's why you don't see a they, whole lot of Nintendo footage on YouTube. <laughs> I've heard they revoke that shit real quick as well. Like, you got to be oh, yeah? Mr. Nintendo. Like, if you just say in a passing comment, I heard at a party once Mario got really drunk and sucked Luigi's dick. Like, that's yeah. it. Yeah, that shit has gone. Yep. Forever. Yeah, they, 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 you I literally. They were brothers. Are they not brothers? <laughs> no, they got really, really drunk. They regretted it the next day, but they vowed <laughs> to never speak about it. They, they live in the same trailer park, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, no, was... we don't know whether they're actually blood relatives. It could be like brothers, as in like friends. Is there ever confirmation? <laughs> also, is baby Mario Mario as well? Because you see them in games together. So that's some time dimensional shit. If it's baby Mario, is also Mario as a child. Welcome to the Twilight Zone, viewers and listeners. I don't know, just, Welcome just, to just the simple. Twilight Zone. <laughs> Welcome to the inner workings of Gary's mind. Mind. I know. <laughs> like, he's like, wait, <laughs> wait. How does this? How does this family feud it work? Turns out wholesome. <laughs> He turns a wholesome just, video game into the most no, 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 no. macabre <laughs> and sick mind never fuck think about ever. Right, right, okay. I'm just saying, right, Mario has got, like, a hard-on for Peach and has for, like, many, many years. But I've played games where he's, like, saving baby Peach and, like, shit like that. Like, you know, he's saving a baby version of herself. Would that not kill the attraction for you when you've saved them as an infant? As long as he's not picking her up in, like, a minivan with candy and shit, I'm all right. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. <laughs> For I'm forever just tarnishing Mario's life. Nice so white in a van around that's his free candy on the side. Yeah, yeah. Hey, little girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just saying. No, I mean, and like, and like, this, this is like uh, a big thing to me, and that's the whole reason why I, I left YouTube, because I did a whole – not 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 like I make money or not like Briar, for instance. Briar's bigger. A lot of these bigger YouTubes, YouTubers that actually do Nintendo content – I had a Donkey Kong playthrough of Donkey Kong because it's probably one of the better platformers to ever be released. And they pulled my whole playthrough down. And I was okay. like, okay, whatever. And then they pulled, they ended up pulling my uh, my Master Blaster playthrough down, uh, two or three other game, the games that I had like Nintendo content on, but I wasn't really talking about Nintendo. And they pulled those down. It was just like background. And they pulled yeah, that shit down yeah, too. I was like, to okay, well, in that case, I'm done with YouTube. <laughs> it was 20, I want to say 20... Late 2015 and early 2016, when uh, Nintendo started doing that with me, they they pulled my Smash Brothers content. They pulled Bayonetta two, uh, and when they started doing that, I had Bayonetta, lots of games. That's not even published by Nintendo, is it? It, it it's it's they they, they own the rights to it. It, it, they it was own only the for Nintendo it, console, Briar, and, and they pulled it. They pulled that. They pulled my Smash Brothers content, and when they I had like 20 games of Smash. I was playing against you know high level players. Uh, and when I when I, those got pulled, I no longer was I ever going to upload anything from Nintendo. So this here is just for my personal use. You'll never see anything on my YouTube channel anywhere else because of Nintendo's very Orwellian views on YouTube streaming and, and those matters. So in in, in short, uh, Mr. Inner Black. Yes, Nintendo. I've lost a lot of respect for Nintendo due to those practices, um, and that's something that they they have an opportunity to fix with the Switch. But from what I understand, it's just as bad. Uh, you know, I have a Switch, and, and uh, I would love to put some of the games I have on my channel. But I know that from what I hear, Nintendo doesn't like you to uh, show any footage of their games, any audio from their games, and uh, as until they change those those viewpoints, I just won't support them in that way by putting any content out there that's really, it's a benefit to them. Uh, but another company that comes to mind, probably more so than Nintendo, that I lost a lot of respect for was Konami. And uh, the way that Konami uh, went after Hideo Kojima and, and basically tried to ruin this guy. They tried to ruin his career. They tried to ruin his name. They tried to publicly ostracize him and, and make him look like some super villain only to uh, in turn damage themselves probably irreparably uh the company now is a shell of what it used to be it's making games honestly that no one's really looking forward to buying and i, I don't respect the company at all for their public stance or the way that they handled an intimate internal issue so publicly and pretty much shat on all their supporters especially when they when they decided they're no longer going to make games that are going in the pachinko direction they didn't really care and then only later to backpedal and try to clean up their image. And I think that they have the option, the opportunity to clean their image as well. But as it stands now, I have virtually no respect for Konami as a video game company. Do you remember the news story that we did a little while ago about Konami? When anyone that left Konami, they were blackballing. 
Mm-hmm. They were just literally sending out yeah. to their to people saying, "Don't hire them. Do you know how, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. do not hire these people if they've worked for us and left. If they were loyal to to Kojima, like just you know, don't hire them. They're, they're a bunch of shit bags. Like, there's nothing nice you can say oh, about. Yeah, I feel it. like shit bag is a good word. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not everyone that works at Konami. I'm sure there's a lot of people working there that just collect a paycheck and go home and think, "I work for a shit company." You know, like if you're a if you're a parking attendant, you know, and you're putting like, um, like what's it called, like traffic attendant? What what do you call them in the states? So in the UK, we call them traffic wardens. The people who issue like parking violations to people. Oh, a renter cop. We call them renter cops. <laughs> yeah, we're renter cop. You're a pin. Well, anyone that like you know, you're parked. You're parked in an illegal space, and they give you like a hundred dollar fine. I'd equ- I'd equate that to working for Konami, you know. Like, wait, you wait, 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 wait! You get a hundred dollar fine for parking in the wrong spot there? In the UK, yeah. Just be Equivalent. thankful you live in the states, my good fuck friend. That I park my t- I park my car like yeah, ticket me. I don't give <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'll pay her twenty dollars <laughs> on my way out. Funny story. I went to pay a ticket and I parked and and um, the meter ran over and as I came out, the guy was giving me a ticket. Yeah. In front in front of the courthouse. Trying to look at You're in the courthouse. He, I was in the courthouse. Paying yeah. another ticket? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the circle of life. Man. You guys are taking off the car walk, right? The circle of life, Gary. <laughs> Walked right back, walk. back in into the courthouse. God damn it. <laughs> he said, I'm, oh, it, was a, it was a Nigerian, so he could have been scamming me. But he said, I'm already writing the ticket, sir. I, was I, like, uh, I, but I, I'm I right definitely here, hear man. you guys on Konami. Konami, I feel like, is the, it's definitely the, the easy answer here. Uh, just because they've been in the news so much lately for so much douchebaggery. Uh, Nintendo, I hear you guys on Nintendo, but I do respect that at least they... I, maybe the I don't... Res- What's that? They have the properties to, to tote it. At least they're honest. At least they're open about their motivation, right? It's like... Yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with their stance... But, like, you know you know, if you're putting up Nintendo footage on your YouTube that you're running, you know, you're, you're running that risk, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and and I, I can respect that, you know, they feel like they have a right to these properties that they created. And they don't want to kind of partake in what many companies see as free advertising. Other companies see as you're using our assets to make money. <laughs> You know, like it's definitely a gray area, uh, and Nintendo's on the other side of that, and I can respect that. It does mean that I don't make videos about Nintendo games. I loved Zelda, but you know, I'm just not gonna, you, I'm not gonna talk options? about it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and at least when it comes to Nintendo, Briar, you're, you're totally right. They've been consistent with their motivations. They've always been a very conservative Japanese company, and they yeah. have old school. Uh, views on the, the way that they conduct themselves and it kind of falls in line with the way they've always been you know even back with the, the the original nes they were very conservative and what they would allow on their console and what they wouldn't and you had to go through all this rigmarole in order to get your stuff published and mm. that's kind of uh grown into the, the the new era of gaming and what nintendo is now but at least they've been consistent so you can't say that they were ever liberal with their with their their property yeah i think uh, it, it, it sucks just real fucking... hard if you had already Posted Nintendo stuff on your YouTube channel. Oh God! And then once they made yeah. the policy, then you got fucked. That's oh, hardcore. They're, they're going back and like filtering through all my shit. And right when that happened, I was like, "Why post anything on YouTube then? If you're gonna, if it, any of this shit could change at any time, PUBG could come out and be like, hey, anybody with a PUBG video, it's getting pulled now.' You know, and then then what? Then you're fucked even more. So that's that's really my answer is YouTube. Is I know it's not they're not a game developer, but they're definitely to me very much involved in gaming and the shit that they have done over the last year has angered me more and more like every day and i can i definitely understand your reason for leaving youtube and i've seen people with hundred thousand two hundred thousand uh uh subscriber channels just say fuck you i'm going to twitch i'm going to be a twitch person from now on and I don't blame them. Someone's one iPhone. Bit. Someone's iPhone. That's iPhone, right? That's <laughs> I'm iPhone? fishing around in my pocket right now, turning that fucking <laughs> thing off. I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, man. Didn't even, Brian didn't even break face. He was just. Oh no, he didn't. Like, That's a bad boy, man. I was. I was at a wedding. Uh, I, I don't know. I was like 21, 22, and my. I'm sitting in the wedding, uh, you know, watching the ceremony, 
and my fucking phone starts ringing, and I got it in my breast pocket, and you know everybody's like, "Oh my god, who's got their phone on during this wedding?" And I just reach into my pocket, silence it. I'm like, "Oh my god, who's got their <laughs> phone on?" <laughs> right You're gonna talk machine. about one of the wedding shoots you were doing, like you as the photographer, were just sitting there with your phone going up, just like <laughs> swagging it off. Doesn't matter. Just keep snapping. Done. I didn't answer it. Be like, is this a new business call? I'm going to make a little money here. <laughs> <laughs> hold up. Hold up. I got to take this. <laughs> look, I, as, you, as you guys mentioned this, I look at my YouTube channel, and, and two of the four, two of four of my latest videos have been uh, marked as not suitable for all advertisers. Mm hmm uh, one where uh, I was requesting to play with Destiny players, and uh, what? the one about Andrew House, uh, him leaving. Uh, okay, Sony. so I watched your video about looking for Destiny players. Yes. What on earth could have demonetized that video? I don't. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't. I even think I watched I... it, and I did feel a little bit worse about myself after <laughs> watching it. So it, it might be something that causes emotional harm. You piece of shit. <laughs> I had three times you were like, you, I've you got lots of friends the within the Destiny community. Um, I know Gary, I know Brian, I know Wilson. Unfortunately, they won't play with me. You said it like seven times, man. You That shit hurt. That shit hurt. By the, by the I didn't time, say I that shit. It. You may, hey, you're going to infer my thoughts. That word, those words never came out of my mouth. I said, you assholes are busy. And you got yeah, obligations. So they're always busy and I see them online. Like, like, this is like, dick in the dirt. Dick in the dirt. <laughs> that shit with me? Gary, you know you ain't coming over to the console anyway. It's like pulling teeth with you. I don't hear that shit. Hey, Gary, come play PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4. <laughs> oh, no. We don't do that here. You you just got a mouse that. and keyboard there. You too good that. I was playing with Gary the other day. I think we played three games of Cruise and he's like, fuck this. I'm out. <laughs> Thank you. Done. That's why I can't get you, Gary. You won't come down from your cloud. Oh, man. That was, that was As he's walking away, he's like, jump. I can't wait for the fucking PC version to come out. <laughs> I just kick the PlayStation like a dog, you know. Just, fucking just give it a swift boot as I Damn, walk Damn, Gary. You can't be so crude, uh, so crude to the, piece, the uh, console gamers, man. We, we need love, too, man. I got to play with you once, Gary, and I really enjoyed it. Until you let me know how much you didn't enjoy it. I played with you on PUBG. That was some good shit, man. God damn it, Gary. What's the next topic, Mr. Inner Black? Um, well, All it's right. fine, actually. Right. I've got one more All that right, I've got to say out there. Do we not care anymore? Have we, like, gone... We've, we've kind of ratted on YouTube. We've ratted on Konami. Yeah. Do we not care about actual developers that, that do... Like, is microtransactions so the norm now that we just don't give a shit? Because, like, Shadow of War is, like, you know, you can now buy loot crates and not have to play the game. You've got things like... I don't see this as a, a developer like, problem, Carrie. I'll be honest you know, with you. I, I don't. Publisher problem, you think? See, I don't even see it as a publisher problem. I, I see it as a us problem. The day that gamers decide to stop paying for this shit is the It'll day the stuff disappears. Yep. It's, yeah, that's it's the that reason. Simple. The reason you just brought up Gary is the reason why I'm not buying Shadows of Mordor actually, because like, yeah, I can put the time into the game. But if this Joe Schmo can just come in and buy everything and play it how he wants, then what's the point of me getting it? It's like typing in a cheat code that you pay for. Like yeah. it's like it's like <laughs> it's like it's like Game Genie. Only every single cheat you want, you have to put money into. Like you got what? a quarter slot on your Game Genie. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> analogy there, in the Black. Oh, I never thought of it like that. Man, that's crazy. I mean, the thing Forza, that I think Forza about did this. the same thing. Forza did the same thing. Forza Sep did the same thing. They have loot crates, but it's randomized, and you don't know what you're getting in there. Like you don't even get stuff for the car that you're fucking driving. Are you tell what? Like. I mean, you say it's people me. need to stop buying it, but I actually had a really good point on this a little while ago, and it's a good transition to move on to the next thing, but I want to leave it on this. There's laws in the United States, there's laws in the UK about gambling, ages you can gamble, where you can gamble, legally what you can do, what you have to do, warnings, regulations, etc. When you buy a loot crate, you can't tell me that is not gambling because you've got a percentage chance to get an item in there and you're paying to buy it. It's like a slot machine. And a lot of these games are rated like T for Teen. So you're saying that a 13 year old can legally gamble in your game? Well, especially Gary, if you're if you have a marketplace for those items like yeah. CS:GO, where you yep. can you can sell pay money shit. to gamble for that stuff, and if you win, you can sell that thing for a thousand dollars. Yeah, so it's yeah. real gambling. So people aren't going to stop it because people. It's like saying, well, casinos will shut down when people stop gambling. 
It's like, no, it's an addiction problem, you know, and it's something that, that you get that dopamine drip to buy but, it. So, I mean, look at Destiny. Thing, Destiny, though. Destiny, every engram is technically a loot crate. You're damn Destiny. right it is. Woo, loot. And, and when I got when I got that when I got that strange business today or whatever the fuck that that mm. <laughs> you will address the right. sweet business properly, sir. <laughs> yeah, <that's> <laughs> sweet <laughs> Christmas. I, think I was is. like, I was like, what is this gun? I've never had this gun before. That's everyone needs that gun this rests on our shoulders as gamers if we stop paying for it if we stop buying into it they'll stop doing it because it will not be worth the development cost it takes to put it in the game but we do support it it's in some of the most popular games online right now it's in PUBG. it's in uh overwatch it's in uh give me another example uh csgo we already talked about i mean we are we bitch about it but then we Dish out the, the dollars. Machine. If we yeah, Fortnite. if we stop paying for it, it would disappear. It would just be gone because companies just wouldn't do it. They, it's not worth it. But you know, w here we are bitching and moaning, but not actually putting our dollars okay. where they need to be. I, I, and the companies they're they're beholden to stockholders. You know they they've got to make money. That is the point of making a company is to make money. And if they see this easy revenue stream, of course they're going to fucking take advantage. I don't blame yeah. the companies at all for it. I don't. And, you know, I understand where you're coming from. In a, in a perfect world, I guess, Gary, we could make that argument. But honestly, there's some DLC and, and, and items I've purchased that I've actually enjoyed. So, you know, you can be on both sides of the argument. I'm sure at some point in your life, Gary, you've bought DLC and you've enjoyed it. Uh, Sean, sure. there's a sixty dollar DLC. No, there's a, there's, a, there's a sixty dollar DLC for Galgum, and the only thing it does is make the schoolgirls' dresses see through, uh, and that was money well spent. So, <laughs> I thought actually, uh, Justin, you you had in in the topic itself, you had a good example, uh, Epic Games, where they built oh. the engine that runs Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and then they used the they used the work that Player Unknowns had done to add that same mode into Fortnite. Fortnite. I mean, have you lost ex respect for Epic because they did that? I I have not. I have not because it's like I look at it the uh, in the aspect of a lot of games. A lot of people are going to take things that everybody else brings to the table and be like, "Oh, okay, I'm gonna take, take this from this game. It. Yep, put my twist on it, and then re-release it in a sense." Which Yes, you could say Fortnite has the same same uh, mode as uh, PUBG. Yes, I get that. But at the same time, you can't build shit in PUBG. So they have that working for them, you know. So, so if it's you go, different enough, yeah. Yeah, it's different enough to push to push well, the to push the boundary of that game style, you know. And and it's gonna keep growing. It's gonna keep doing that. It's well, like it's like one person does something and then the other person is going to copy them, but do a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to go like that again. And then it's going to, and then sooner or later, it's going to become the norm and be boring. When you, you know, look at game, Call of Duty. When you have a game and, and it's happened with Call of Duty too, but if you have a game as popular as something like PUBG with millions upon millions of dollars made in a very short period of time, they're going to be at the top of the hill. Uh, and, and of course, um, imitation is a sincere, the sincerest form of flattery. And a lot of people see, you know, imitation as flattery. Of course, in this situation, PUBG won't. But who in their right mind as a publisher would not come up with an idea similar to this? I, I think it's a brilliant idea. It gives people who don't play on, you know, who aren't playing that particular game, who maybe enjoyed Fortnite before or something very similar to what made PUBG amazing. And from what I understand, people... Go ahead. The way I look at it is look at Twitch in a sense. Twitch shows the the top games being streamed, and you see Fortnite was way low. And then as soon as that PUBG, PUBG uh, based gameplay came out or uh, Battle Royale or whatever the hell it's mm -hmm. called, as soon as that dropped, it was it was four on Twitch. Wow, you know what so, I'm saying? I'm gonna so, check that out. To be honest, I really want to check that out. My son's playing it right now. He just came out and told me, he "said Dad, you gotta you gotta download it." I said, "I already have it." He said, "Please play it. It's so fun." So we need yeah, to schedule it's, Revolver. It's all right. It's it's less competitive than PUBG, but it's definitely a good time, and it's free, so oh, you can't definitely. say that about everything. All I'm saying is, if I'm trying to shoot somebody and they're building a wall in front of me, I'm gonna throw my controller against the fucking wall. <laughs> I'm gonna want to break things. At least you got a, another one coming, so you'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shh. All right. 
So where are we next, gentlemen? We've reached topic two after 48 minutes. So this is going to be about a seven hour show. So everyone, you know, get your. <laughs> Hang on tight, pencils. guys. Get your, get your butt cushions ready. I That's got it. mine. Who's, who's this is Justin's it? topic. Wow, this is super it, awkward. All of a sudden, we that's have no pregnant pause. Do reviewers need to be good at a game to give an accurate score? This is Inner Black Ninja's topic. Would you like to elaborate on this thought, Mr. Inner Black? Uh, I was actually uh, thinking about this topic while playing Cuphead. Um, I've been playing that game on and off lately. Uh, people have been claiming that it's super, super hard. It's, oh my God, it's the hardest platform. Me, I've played every single platformer ever made, for the most part. You name a platformer, I've more than likely played it. Salt and Sanctuary, sure. played it, beat it. I've, I've played a lot of you platformers. Beat, beat. Oh, God, that's a hard I, game. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, I don't think that this game is necessarily as hard as people are making out to be. I think the people that are playing the game um, the, and are reviewing it, and like journalisms for that matter, suck. They don't <laughs> play enough games to begin with. They you you Okay. In a sense, journalisms are getting good at writing about games, not good at playing them. Absolutely. So it's bothering me to uh, a high level when you have this guy reviewing the game and he's saying it's really hard. I don't know what I, you guys I, think I, about I, that. I, I, I 100% agree with you there. Uh, you know, if you watch a football game, the the, the a person doing the uh, announcing knows football. If you watch UFC, Joe Rogan knows uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and he knows fighting techniques. Uh, and so you really go to someone who knows that craft. And when it comes to gaming, like you said, a person who's, uh, you know, a writer, they, they hone their skills writing, not playing a game, not playing a game. And, and so they, they spend more time critiquing things that necessarily might not be the case because of their lack of skill. This is a topic that's been swirling around the, the ether for a long time. Uh, when games get panned by uh, reviewers because they're un they're inadequate when it comes to playing certain types of games, games of Bloodborne, uh, Dark Souls, they were panned by certain reviewers who did not understand the dynamic of a difficult game. It becomes the narrative too. Yeah, I I will say I I think Cuphead is a pretty hard game. I'm not nearly uh, yeah I'm not nearly as hardcore uh, on the platformer side as Justin is. Uh, but I, I find it difficult, not overly difficult, not like I can't get through each level, but it, I do often, some some levels it take me 15 to 20 minutes to beat. I've spent over an hour on other levels. Um, so it, Sounds like a been, good time, man. It's been difficult. I, it is a good time. I really do like the game. Like It, it really is fun. Um, Quick question, Briar. That game is two-player uh, co-op, correct? Yeah, same screen. Same, same screen. screen. Yep. Do you think that would add, you know, add a, a new layer of fun Actually, to the experience? So I watched. Uh, I think it was Giant Bombs' quick, quick look on the on the game, and I think they were playing uh, co-op for part of it. Maybe it wasn't Giant Bomb. Somebody was. I was watching somebody play uh, co-op on it. It looked harder, honestly, oh. because so much of that game is tracking where your character is and all the shit that's coming at you. And yep. moving, uh, and to have another character on the screen shooting at the same time, it just seemed to add extra shit on the screen that you had to track, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm guessing bosses would double up or become much more difficult and stuff. I you, definitely, you definitely have to have some level of skill to be able to review a game like Cuphead, like Dark Souls, because... I don't feel like the narrative of the review should be this game's fucking hard. Mm -hmm. the, re the review should be reviewing the game. Maybe there should be a paragraph in there that says, by the way, this game is very difficult. And, you know, be prepared for that because, you know, that's definitely pertinent information for somebody who's about to buy it. Mm -hmm. But if it's the narrative of the whole review, you may have an issue. Yeah, totally yeah, agree. And that's, I feel like that's the... I don't know. I, I, I challenge that about a reviewer having to have skill as such. So I'm thinking about the environment in which a reviewer operates in. Uh, yeah. And unless you're an independent magazine that's purely digital and you're working remotely, well, let's take um, a, a company. I'm going to call them um, GNI for the for the sake of arguments. Mm. Um, you've got this this office um, GNI based in San Francisco. You've got maybe you know 30 people in there that are editors and reviewers. Um, this is the view of one person who's experienced the game and they, they've got to play it through. So this is one individual who's played the game, but these people are going to be 
shooting the shit in the hallways, talking to other people about it, sharing their experiences, talking yeah. through. I don't think whether or not you're, you know, if, if I'm a terrible, terrible player at platformers, one, I'm not going to be given the platformer to review. And two, I'm going to say to someone, this is really hard. And the overwhelming consensus in the office is going to be, you're just shit at that game. Like, like it wasn't difficult at all. It was fine. You know, it, fr from my perspective, I, I feel like, more understanding the context that the industry is in more broadly, understanding the history of where that game's come from, the things that have influenced it, the things that it's it's out competing against, um, all the other games that, you know, for me, playing a game well is less important than understanding the broad context in which that game's released in and understanding how this ranks performance-wise against the others. I hear you. I think, but I think that what you're saying is absolutely correct, except that you have to be able to play the game at least well enough to play the game, basically, to get to the end of the game and to see all the content the game has and to experience what the average player is going to experience when they're playing the game. Mm -hmm. I was on a diatribe probably two years ago about how uh, we were getting all these multiplayer games coming out and the reviews would come out and it'd be like, 9.0 for Battlefield 4, unbelievable game, the be most beautiful game I've ever seen absolutely gorgeous and then the game would come out and it was fucking unplayable because they didn't test the multiplayer <laughs> at all and then the and then the servers went live right yeah we were all there yes we were like, <laughs> yeah so that's not necessarily the skill of the reviewer but it's part you need to be able to play all of the game to, to review a complete to review product. It completely um for destiny one of the biggest problems with destiny reviews is they came out Day one, and they hadn't—they mm -hmm. hadn't even played half of the content. They never played mm -hmm. any Nightfalls. They didn't play any Crucible. They didn't play the raid, the best part of the game. Best part. Reviewers had not played, and they, you know, they they stuck a seven point five on the game, and they fucking walked away. They, you know, they went to review the next thing. Um, mm -hmm. gotta be, you gotta be patient with the reviews, and you gotta have the skill to get to the content and play through the content. I think. I mean. Otherwise, well, like, review something that doesn't take skill. Like, your reviews are. I, it's, it's, I, I agree <laughs> with you 100%, Briar. I've done a number it's of reviews in my shows. life, and, and <laughs> I fancy myself a pretty decent video game player. And, and I've come up against games over the past few years that have been difficult. But if I'm going to review something, I'm going to review it fully. I want to see all that content. Uh, and so if a, if, a, if a person is out there playing a game as a reviewer and, and – a game is difficult, and that's the only, like Briar said, this is the only narrative of the review. This is going to be bone-breakingly hard. This is just one of the most difficult things you'll ever play, uh, and they don't get really into the meat and potatoes of what the game is actually about, what, what the story is, character development, uh, additions to the game, nothing other than the fact that it's hard. Like a lot of what's going on with Cuphead, I think that a lot of those reviewers lose credibility. So I agree with you here, Briar. I think that your synopsis has destroyed G and I or Gary's new idea. Um, I, I'll say uh, I, I do actually read IGN reviews, and what they've started doing is like kind of like reviews in process. I agree with that 100%. You know, so – for instance, they'll post a review day one, and they'll say it's mm -hmm. a review in process, and they'll they'll make edits to the video and score as they, you know, as the servers go live and as more content goes. Yeah, they they've been doing that for a while now, and I honestly appreciate yeah. that. I I yeah. just I just stopped watching IGN because of the forced the way that they force you to watch a thirty minute thirty second ad every video just drove me crazy. Just get IGN Prime, man. You don't have to watch that video. Fifteen dollars. Uh, you give him a pay, pay to watch hey. the homie, Kyle. <laughs> he, t he told Please. you to suck the man's dick. That's what he just told you. <laughs> That's what they do in the UK. Fun fact. It depends what you're paying to watch Naomi Cole do. Let's be honest. $15 yeah, is a, a reasonable sum. You know what's fucked ah. up? I'm, I'm going to tell you something right now. Is that we've we've talked Destiny. And obviously, I've got a personal connection to Destiny. I, I've met like Destiny uh, developers. And I've met you know Destiny co uh, community managers. When we talk about IGN, the guys over at IGN that I know, like Fran Marabella and Destin Legary. Destin Legary, yeah. I, when you guys start talking about IGN, I have a serious fucking reaction to it. I do not want you guys talking shit. I really like those guys. It's like you're, you're trash like talking Dustin my too. friends. <laughs> I like Destin Legary. I think he's a cool cat. Um, yeah. I never had any issue with him. Some of the other guys, Ryan McCaffrey, 
looks like a living Xbox 360 uh, character that you created. Best and, console and of all time. Hashtag Briar was wrong. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think as an institution, I respect them. And, and you know, again, I'm not here slurping at their uh, at their at their songs. I just think they do the best they can with the resources they've got, the industry they work Slurping, in. Slurping, man. What's you know, going on in got, that mind, Gary? They're a, they're a professional organization, um, probably one of the, the last big professional video game journalist organizations, at least. Um, my view is that they've got a wealth of experience in video games. I don't care how good the individual reviewers are at the games. I know as a collective, they've probably got more years and wealth of experience in video gaming industry than any other journalist um, institution out there. So, you know, you've got guys in there that have been in, in the video games industry, be it as developers or reviewers, for up to 25 years. I think like Pierre Schneider, you've got like 25 years experience of setting up the business and working through it. it. You know, I think cut the guys some slack. If they struggle on a level in a difficult game or a game that is universally understood as being a bit difficult, that doesn't mean that they're not qualified to review the game. In maybe my it's just maybe in that op in that case, if you're really struggling to get through a game, uh, maybe it's time to just pass that review on to somebody else who's got I agree. easier time doing platformers. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I, you know, I, 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 and, and when I when I just talked about IGN, I that was purely just because I just fucking like those guys, and I just wanted to let oh, you yeah. guys know. No, yeah, I, just, I like them. I listen to every podcast they do, man. I'm I'm not I'm not shitting on them particularly. I'm just a lot of people come out like for instance, you guys brought up uh Bloodborne. I platinum Bloodborne. Bloodborne is not hard. Bloodborne was by far not hard at all. It was the worst from software game made so far to date. Damn. And I, I think I think Neo did it better than they did ever. They ever did it. Neo's so, coming to PC, uh, like soon. yeah. I'm I was gonna say to Gary, that. buy that buy that on PC. Yeah, I had it on PS4. I didn't play it. Oh Jesus, yeah. Jesus! That's the best from software game that wasn't made by from software. <laughs> Neo is better than than uh. Oh, oh my God! Not to mention uh, Inner Black Ninja. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you're a ninja. <laughs> Get yeah. some ninja shit. Damn, might have to check that out. It's one game I never tried. Oh, so exciting! All right, guys, moving on to the next topic. Yeah, man, this is one of mine, and I think that we. As we've just shown there, we are like a pack of fucking hungry piranhas when we smell blood in the water. Like gamers and just general millennials and social media consumers love to shit on things as quickly as is possible. And then it's a dog pile of who can shit on it the, 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 you know, the hardest and the, the most ferociously. So my topic is, do we, does our culture of infinite information kill games or just projects prematurely? So as soon as you smell weakness, as soon as you smell, like I said, blood in the water, it's just destroyed. So a great example of this and one that I think can start the conversation is Lawbreakers, right? Lawbreakers, I played the open beta for, and I actually played the closed alpha because I bought it during the closed alpha. It's a good fucking game. Cliff Blazinski made a good game. It plays well. There's no lag. The the, the shooting feels responsive. It's Got, it's a hero shooter, so people will compare it to Overwatch, but in my opinion, it's not Overwatch because each class can outplay each other class. There's no dependency on team synergy. It's its own thing. Launched with 7,000 players on day one. That was the story. Was This has only got 7,000 players. That was what went through. One week after they ran the story, it's lost 80% of its player base. And now it's the butt of everything's joke. I mean, it actually had four four concurrent players yesterday. It peaks what? at 40 players. Yeah, four, four players playing on Steam. And, and again, this is not oh console, this is PC. You're kidding so me? But yeah, still... you can queue up and have 2v2 games against the same guys all day long. It's fantastic. You get to really know them. You get an appreciation for them when you play it. But, <laughs> I mean, the thing is, that if there wasn't that news story of no one's playing it, no one's playing this game, it's a fucking dead game, dead game, don't buy it, don't buy it. Like, that's all you hear round down your throat rather than this game actually got 8 out of 10s and, you know, 7.9s and 8.2s. And it's actually a good shooter. So why was that not heard? Why did we have to ram down people's throat that no one's playing it, no one's playing it? Same with For Honor. For Honor, one month after its release, had lost 90% of its player base. And that's the only thing I know about For Honor. Because it's, it's uh, For Honor was a lot of uh, play-to-win bullshit play also. Play-to-win. I have that game. Yep. I played it once. Yep. I mean, I'm not saying it's a good game, but that's the story that I heard was it lost 90% of its player base. Like, people only care about the games that people are playing. They're like, oh, where are you in the Twitch directory? 
where is that? Who's playing it? How was so, Steam? Doesn't this rest somewhat on the publisher though, or the or the developer, or at least the marketing department? Of yeah, marketing has to get there. Like they they need to get out there and say, hey, you know, like people Hello. are playing this game. This game, if you release a multiplayer only game and the story comes out that it's got four players, your PR department just fucked up. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. A long time ago, yeah, <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, well, look at right. look at look at in the sense of lawbreakers, like you brought up. Um, how many advertisements have you seen for that? Even like on YouTube or any of that shit on on Twitch, if you don't have Twitch Prime or whatever the case may be, you, you don't see any ads for this fucking game anywhere. You know, the it's only like, reason I knew about this game at all was because Gary played it and talked about it on the podcast. I played it too. Uh, yeah. And 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 look, I see both sides of the coin here. Of course. Running a story that there's 7,000 players on day one probably isn't good for Lawbreakers itself. Was it true? Possibly. Now, if it's true, do the consumers have a right to know? Will that make consumers look at it and maybe question it more? I played this game. I thought it was a great – it was great for what it was, but it wasn't different. I felt like I would be – in my own Overwatch. personal opinion, it was Overwatch with a different coat of paint. It was very similar. It did not feel different enough from Overwatch to me. And if I wanted to buy another Overwatch, I'd just buy that. And so maybe a lot of people, you know, Overwatch is huge. People are yeah, already nice. playing that game. So if you put new skins on characters and give, you know, a lot of the characters in Lawbreakers do the exact same thing as characters in Overwatch. So, I mean, you got to look at the parallels there. And there are probably a lot of consumers out there who played a hell of a lot of Overwatch who looked at Lawbreakers and decided for themselves, like I did, mm -hmm. that I already have this game. I already have something similar to this. I don't need to spend more money or waste more money buying something that I already feel like I already own. And so that might be the reason that there are four concurrent players on Steam. Who knows? Uh, it's That's it's a sad crazy. story. It's a sad yeah. story uh, for, for the developer, for the publisher. But for the consumer, do we have the right to know if a game is not picking up steam? Uh, hey, it's hey oh. it's, before you didn't have it, though, I'm just talking about, like, 16-bit era. Like, let's take um, Genesis or, you know, SNES or whatever else there. Even PlayStation 1 at the time. A game came out and you saw it in GameStop and it was number one selling in the charts for that week in GameStop. It might have only sold 7,000 copies, but it was just the only game released that week, and that made it number one. Yeah, but there was no online multiplayer. When you release you an online really? multiplayer-only game, like Lawbreakers is, it, if there's true. nobody to fucking play against, the game doesn't work. I mean, in VR, Gary, you have you have experience with this. A ton of VR games are online multiplayer-only. Yeah. And you basically are wasting your money if you buy one that's over six months old because yep, there's nobody, nobody there playing it. So you're yeah, basically just then. throwing money out the window because you're going to boot that game up and then you're sitting matchmaking for fucking two hours. Yeah, how you, was that in uh, Werewolves Within? Basically? Werewolves just within. You every night sitting there alone waiting for someone to join the And match. it's the truth. I, <laughs> I've done night. it. I've turned it on and I've sat for an hour to see one person <laughs> pop up. They'll pop up <laughs> and say, hey, an hour? Yeah, I'm doing things around the house. I got five PS4s here, alone. but I'll turn Tears it on and I'm from waiting. The headset. Just... <laughs> oh, you like steamy in there with all the, you know, the the. the, the I tears. still want to fucking play that with you. We need to. Uh, I want to. It, it, it'd be a lot of fun, Briar. I'm telling you now, the game is a lot of fun. Well, I mean, it, the last few times I played, there were there were groups, but you can't find more than one or two groups of people. And what once it, I sat there for. It's like you're playing this board oh. game. Uh, you're in this these old villages, <laughs> cartoon know. style, and uh, there's a, there's there's a, t a table <laughs> in, in the center. There's six players, and we all look human, but there are one or two of them that are werewolves. Someone's and, a and, werewolf, and you got to find out who the that's werewolf the is by asking questions. Oh, okay. Werewolves will That's the game. It's She's pretty damn cool. Someone's kind of like playing Clue. It sounds like it's really fun, and, and you got to be a good liar, and you got to make people believe in you, and at the end. You know, if you're successful, you pop out as a werewolf and you get to fuck them like Big Bird. But wait, wait, wait. I've got an important <laughs> question, though. What would you rather Hashtag play? Werewolves like Within. <laughs> would you rather play Werewolves Within or would you rather play Primal Carnage? Because I'm going to be buying one of these games tonight, man. And I need to know. I need to know hot from BC Gamer which one. I would rather play Werewolves Within than Primal Carnage. Primal what, Carnage what? is the Primal. dinosaur fighting game? You know, it's just, it's a first person <laughs> shooter. Six human <laughs> against six dinosaur, all controlled by human opponents. Wait, and what? Wait, wait, wait. It's a dinosaur shooting game? Yes. That's called it's, Turok, isn't it? No. It's called Primal <laughs> this one, Carnage. The dinosaurs hold the guns. It's pretty good. No, they don't. 
The like, dinosaurs have all the perks that dinosaurs will have, and humans get just as fucked as we would in real life. It takes like ten human to kill one dinosaur. I say, fuck it's, like Big Bird. Fuck <laughs> like Big Bird. Primal Carnage. <laughs> That is the hashtag of the week right there. If anyone can illustrate that for us and send us it in via email, I'd really oh, like dude, to see some that. creative illustrations of it. Revolvergamescast at gmail.com. Revolvergamescast at gmail.com. And put it in the title so we know what we're looking for as well. <laughs> oh, my God. Game prepare me. Is... Prepare me for what I'm about to I don't to even remember about. what we're talking about. <laughs> We're on to the next topic, actually, which is a good one. Um, and it's, it's one of yours, Brian. It's, uh, it's an important and serious one. As, as, uh, as respectable members of the community and people that are well-informed on video games, oh. we need to know what three games we are most looking forward to this year remaining. So if they've come out, you're fucked. Um, yeah, you can't like pick something that's already come out. Can yeah. I go you, can't, first? you can't pick your backlog. Know. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Gran Turismo. Uh, mm -hmm. Wolfenstein. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I'm not picking Mario is because it comes out on the same day as Wolfenstein. I'm just saying. I uh -huh. want to play Wolfenstein more than Mario. Um, and Evil Within 2. Evil Within 2. Fuck That's that. a surprise what? to me. No I shit. I, okay, list. so talk to me about Evil Within 2. Why is that on your top three list for the rest of the year? Perfect, perfect timing launch. It's is coming it? out at a perfect time. It's coming out next week, just in time for Halloween type shit. It's going to be... And it's going to be good. It's going to be a great fucking game. It, it'll probably be better than the first one, but the first one was just meh. It wasn't that great. I feel nice. like that game got better, though, didn't it? Like, they patched that game really well, didn't they? Yeah, because when it came out, it had the box shit, and then they removed that. Yeah. Oh, the letter. They the, had oh, all yeah. kinds of, they had all kinds of fun, and uh, it had really bad tearing, and they patched that. It had, like, a pro patch later on. Which, speaking of pro patches, Witcher 3, pro patch. Check that out. Oh, my God. Witcher 3 is <laughs> it's my favorite one of my game. favorite yeah, games of all time. Brian, they just updated the it for the pro, version. man. It's it's playing very, very... It's not a PC game, okay, Gary? So let me just take this one, all right? What? It's checkerboard in 4K. Sorry, sorry, and sorry. sorry. It... It's not a PC game. What um, consoles was, was The Witcher 1 released on? 1 and 2 are on PC, but one, I'm talking Witcher about... Witcher 1 wasn't released on any console. It was on exactly. PC. It was on PC. So the original series started Which on PC. Which console Witcher runs 2. it at 4K 60 frames per second? PC. 4K, yes. The power of <laughs> X. <laughs> I take a, I, I take a deep X. breath for all my console creeds. The PS4 Pro <laughs> That's version the look. is running. You just did the look that I want to be my screensaver. <laughs> He's going to start stroking his yobo in a minute just to bring him strength. <laughs> is that thing for real called the yobo, though? Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How does this timestamp? This was at uh, what? Battery time does that have? Uh, about eight 71, hours. 71 minutes for the timestamp. If you want to skip ahead yeah, to the it's over. Fucking that's because it's built out of a battery pack. Look at how thick that fucking thing yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Look okay, at that battery. We gotta do that, Gary. We totally gotta start putting the timestamp of the Yobo appearance oh. in the notes. <laughs> yeah, for people <laughs> listening on the audio podcast, he this is a great pulled concept. it out one more time. Fuck it still looks just shit. as bad as it did before. Damn, Super Nintendo. Hey, you know, you know, you know, go. You know why you wouldn't need a Yobo is if the Switch Wireless finally fucking put out their virtual console. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wireless controller, man. But what um, the fuck are we, well, I I am all over. We're the place talking. Side. I don't even remember what we're talking about. We're oh, talking top about three. The Witcher Dang. Three PS4 Pro <laughs> update, which is checkerboard at 4K and digital. Oh no, uh, fuck! Foundry. We're not talking about fucking 2015's Game of the Year. We're talking about the rest of 2017. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready with my list. All right, Evil Within, you, you went with. That's good. I am with you on Wolfenstein. Talk to me a little bit about Wolfenstein, the new Colossus. I, I loved Wolfenstein 1. I love that shit. I played it when it originally came out, and I've the been meaning order. to play it again. But yeah, but I never got around to playing it again. So I'm just like, all right, well, it's this late. Fuck it. I'll just play the new one. But mm -hmm. the, the, the way that they made their guns in that game remind me of an Insomniac game. They're just like so much fun. They have like all the the crazy rockets and all kinds of like shit blowing up. I love those games. Those games are awesome. Not to mention, you're killing Nazis, man. Like you can't get much better than that. Right, right time, right place for killing Nazis, yep. as far as I'm yes. concerned. Uh, actually, I, in the trailer, someone else got fucked like Big Bird as well. Did you see that clip? <laughs> yes. That was that was some impressive shit. No, I'm I'm feeling it this Hashtag time. Fuck by. 
I like Big Bird. <laughs> and I really like I really like their gunplay. Their gunplay is like yeah, yeah, yeah. so smooth. It runs well. Like it's like, it reminds me of Doom, kind of like Doom is man. Doom was Doom is another level. I'm shit. getting Doom on oh the God. Switch, man. I'm not. Get, why? Why would you buy it on the Switch? It's buy it on it's, PC. It's fucking oh. Doom, and, and it's oh, on no. the go. You, no, like, no. look, right. Gary. As I've much as you before. love PC, put that shit in your pocket, okay? All right. Thirty frames on Doom. Are yeah. you ju- that game's designed to be so? Right. Okay, I'm not a frame. Can you play at sixty frames per second on the PlayStation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's Why the fuck would you play it on the Switch then? At thirty. Right, look, I want it on the go. I mean, look, like, Destiny Two is thirty frames. Nobody's complaining about that there. Yes, we are. It's a, it's a, <laughs> look, if, 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 if it runs today. fine to me. I'm a console gamer. I mean, I'm. Fine. I'm in my head. In my head, I'm thinking, hey, you can easily get this to run at thirty frames or uh, sixty frames a second as long as it's 1080. They could do that. I'm, I'm sorry. They can do that on console. They just don't. On the Pro and on the Xbox One fucking shit stick, whatever the hell they're calling it, that can also <laughs> run at 60 frames a second. I don't the care official who you are. Title. The Xbox <laughs> One shit, shit stick. Yeah. I, I love my Switch, right? I love my Switch. I love Doom. Doom is yeah. a game that needs speed. The, yes. the game is all yes. about movement to evade things. It's like moving around big arenas. They, they spread this thing out. When the demons spawn, you get like this huge arena to just dance around in. It Try glancing at 30 frames per second with the I'll little joy Jesus yeah. Christ. No, no. Uh, I'll stick show to uh, what's, what's that? What's that? What's that farming game called? Stardew Valley, man. That's the shit. Yes. That 60, yes. 60 frames per second. Yes. I thought that. And Oxen Free. Yes. You've got Oxen yeah. Free on there, which yes. is an indie yes. game for the year last. Don't, yeah. feed, don't feed him. In you know what's I'm, I'm just, up, actually... he, he, he feels me. He feels me, man. The Switch is a. Look at my Switch, okay? If you look at my Switch. The whole fucking thing is shiny. Where my where my where my where my uh, buttons are because I wore out the matte finish because that's how much I play hand uh, handheld. It's never played in dock mode ever. You know what's fucked that's... up is that if you if you bought that SNES Classic or what's it called SNES Mini, what's it called this time? Classic. SNES Mini. Yep. Yo, no, it's most of Classic. those games. Assuming you're not playing anything 3D on that, are running at 60 frames per second. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They sure are. Um. Okay, so that was two year games. What was the third one? The first one you mentioned? Oh, it was Gran Turismo. Why yeah. are you excited for Gran Turismo? Yeah. I, I actually talked about this to Beastly. My brothers, growing up, they got into sim racing and they would force me to play with them. They would force me to play all these sim racing games. Then I worked for BMW. Then from then on, all those dudes at BMW also were into sim racing and it just kind of progressed from there. Mm-hmm. And Forza is pay to win so i won't buy that so i'm looking forward to gran turismo for that reason and uh it has vr vr baby. i want to yes. tr- i want to check out the vr yeah. i'm pretty pretty Drive stoked about that pretty pretty good wasn't it that was that was a good vr game hey um, now <laughs> eight bit playstation vr there <laughs> we love you I was like, vr if you rub vaseline on your eyes first yeah, and then play the much. game that was Good, Pretty much. Shit there. It's like, I didn't know they made 8 bit VR games. Ooh. <laughs> Drive Club's the only one, apparently. <laughs> Damn, bro. Uh, basically, uh, what do you got? Top three. My top three games are Mario Odyssey for the Nintendo Switch, uh-huh. uh, uh, Skyrim VR. Uh huh. What? And PUBG. What? On and the PUBG Xbox. For the <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> yeah, PUBG oh, okay. I can't God. wait to dig into this. Tell me yeah. about Mario Odyssey first. Well, Mario Odyssey looks like it's. Going to be one of the best times I've had in years. I'm a huge Mario. It's a fucking Mario game, game right? Yes, and it's, it's like a mainline Mario. It's game. a mainline Mario game made in the style of Mario 64, and that's something that, like Mario Sunshine, is made in that style, and it's something I've been wanting for a long time. The game looks fast; it looks amazing, uh, and I just can't wait to see what Nintendo's done with it, man. I've been waiting for this for so long, so many years have I wanted a spiritual successor in that style of Mario game, and from what I understand, this game is is going to fill that cup for me. So I'm super you excited. Can't die. About huh? Yeah. You can't, you can't die in this fucking game. That that right there turned me off instantly. I was like, wait, you can't die? There's it's just unlimited lives? You're like fucking Jesus Mario. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Got a big, big long beard. <laughs> look. I every if you look. can possess Jesus in the game. You can, you can jump into a lot you of throw, things. You throw throw like, Are you looking forward to it because you can jump into a T Rex? I know you're into your dinosaur games. God damn it, you Gary. Can, can you fight Let me dinosaur? just enjoy my list. Does the dinosaur have guns? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, 
for me, Mario's not on my list, Beastly. Mm-hmm. I took my, like, I, I took a different approach for my list, but I could totally, if you're looking for the best games coming out, like Mario's got to be high Mario's, up there. Mario's going to be up there for sure, but yeah. it comes out the same day as Wolfenstein. So yeah. I will not Me. play Mario until I'm done Wolfenstein. Well, All well, right, so Wolfenstein your next one, what was your next uh, one? Uh, Skyrim VR. Skyrim VR. This one's surprising to me, but not that surprising, actually. This is coming well, out for the PlayStation VR, right? Yeah. This is a huge experience for me. I love Skyrim. I love pretty much all the Elder Scrolls games. And to be able to experience that in a virtual reality setting is just transporting yourself to a, a, a magical place and actually feeling like you're there and, and looking around and doing things, interacting with people, casting spells, defending yourself, uh, you know, just going into caves and finding loot. It's just, it's going to be a great experience as, as long as they do it right. You know that that's, that's already up. been confirmed to not have locomotion. That's got teleport movement for the whole of Skyrim. That sucks. That's confirmed. Like they've, no, they've said. They... Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that, though, you're going to be the combat. Skyrim it's going to be VR. that. I mean, yeah. Like if it, if they it's do it, in, if they but, do it, but, in the... Bethesda has like a, a great track record of making broken shit. So uh, I don't. I like try to avoid everything they make. <laughs> oh man, I love Bethesda. Uh, so, I mean, I guess we'll sit and, and see. I'm excited for it. I mean, if it's a playable version of Skyrim that doesn't make me feel like, you know, it's a shitty VR rendition of the game, uh, then I'll definitely be excited to play it. And we know what Skyrim is. We played this game, you know, almost 10 years ago at this point. But I'm still excited to have it in VR. It's going to be fun. And my last yeah. game is... I am. That makes me feel old as fuck, dude. When you say 10 years for Skyrim... Well, it's, it's, I don't know if it's been 10, but it's been, a long, it's been a long time. Yeah, it might be 10. might be longer than that. No. Uh, and, and the last game on my list is PUBG on the Xbox. Xbox this one is one. confusing to me. Why is that? Because you have PUBG already on the PC. Why, like, how does this make it into your top three for the rest of the year? PUBG like, I can understand game. being upset, excited to play it on the Xbox. Well, you guys know I stopped playing PUBG on PC the day that I found out about the Xbox uh, One X version of the game, the Xbox version. You have not seen me on PUBG at all since that day because I gave up the hope and dreamed that one day these hands uh, would somehow become a PC player. I'm just not a PC player. I'm not good at it. Bro, you've seen me play, tr attempt to play that shit. And on this PC, it's not you know up to date and super powerful like you guys. So playing with a, a controller is probably going to get me just as screwed. So I want to play in my native land. I want to play where I come from. And, and I understand, okay. you know, people who I want to. I understand people who play a mouse and keyboard because they're used to that. Me and Inner Black Ninja had a discussion playing Destiny, and and his topic was about, you know, how comfortable you are with a mouse and keyboard, and have have you grown more, you know, gotten more of an affinity towards it. Mine has been the opposite. I grew up playing consoles. The first time I ever played a PC game, I was in my mid thirties. So learning this is foreign to me. And forcing myself to learn it when I can still experience it in the way that I've always known, it might be an inferior version. Sure, I'll concede that. It might be, you know, a lackluster version compared to the most high-powered PCs, but that's my native land. That's the place where I'm the most comfortable, and that's the place I'm the most excited to play PUBG. All right, you've made a good argument, <clears> I think. <throat> I really do. But, I mean, if you want to play the console version, you could just pick up Fortnite now, which is available on PS4. That's true. That is a good point. You can actually play Fortnite I'm uh, waiting for my revolver crew to get down with me, man. I'm waiting for the revolver crew. I think we got to make a date. We got to make a date. Yeah. I think that. you need to can make you, a video. Can you cross people play? To play revolver? Yeah, you, yeah, can. you mentioned can. how the yeah. revolver crew. Wait, 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 wait. wait. For no, the, no, not, for that not with Fortnite, with PUBG. No. I mean, I, I don't know if it works with PC. They but better. damn, it looks good on the Xbox One X. And, and I hear it's coming to the PS4. It uh, is. It is. They, they're they kind of like in in money restraints right now. It's exclusive deal. So it's a timed exclusive, and so I might end up having to buy this game twice. Uh, I'll buy it on the Xbox and, and get comfortable with it, and then I'll buy it on the PS4 when it launches. So I could game share with Kate, and we can get down together. Well, that, but yeah, be, uh, that is going to be a three, slaughter. If you get months. used to controlling that game on a controller on the Xbox, and you play it for three months, and then you're there for day one release on yes, PlayStation, well, it's, it's going to be yeah. a goddamn yeah. slaughterhouse. <laughs> I can't talk wait, about bro. talk about oh, Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> Christmas or news. You, you could just use a Zim 4 and be a god at everything with very little skill. Speaking, speak, Zim, I need to know about that thing, yeah, by the way. Yeah, he was talking about that earlier. I want to know about that shit. Yesterday, so make sure you 
Give him the keys to the PC kingdom after the show, Gary. Where is that, man? Stroke your ego, just stomping on children. It's great. Um, <laughs> my three. Have we done? We've done. We haven't done you yet, Bri, have we? we have, no, I'll go we last. Haven't. Go ahead, Gary. Oh, you want me to? Okay, well, mine. Um, I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to throw a curveball. I'm going to say Destiny 2 PC um, because it is technically a new game. Uh, we haven't had it yet. It's coming out in, what, two and a half weeks' time? Yeah. And to me, I feel like. Um, and I'm not going to go into it because we've we've made people feel bad enough about the, the console versions. I, I feel like it's going to be the definitive version of the game for me because it's going to let me play the game in the way I enjoy playing it, uh, you know, with the frame rate I enjoy, with the inputs I enjoy, and in the ecosystem that I enjoy. The fact I can send chat messages to my friends natively, I can ask my whole clan in one channel, I just send it to the clan channel, I can type a message in game. It's got all the, the, the utility things that I want. There's something else, though, isn't there, Gary? What is the game, it? game, when we played it, the PC beta, the game felt better. Oh, hell yeah, it did. Yeah, the sandbox felt better, but I'm Even not with a bank. controller. I, uh, I mean, I plugged the controller in for one game because I had four hours total, and I kind mm -hmm. of didn't want to use it. I played quite a bit with a controller, and I can absolutely say that game controlled better on PC with a controller than it does on, on the PlayStation 4. No doubt you about it. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 never, I, didn't, like, I didn't, the whole time I played, I didn't play with the controller. I played with keyboard and mouse the whole time. It felt more like Destiny 1 than uh, Destiny 2 does. Destiny 2, I made a video actually that the because after the PC beta, I was so excited because I felt like they had fixed a lot of the issues that I had with uh, the console beta. And it turned out, no. That was just different on PC. Yeah. <laughs> the game, uh, Beastly and Gary, you guys had a discussion in our uh, Twitter message box uh, where you know, Gary was like, I'm really excited for the PC version. And Beastly's like, it's the same fucking game. Like, to me, I'm telling you, the game feels better on the PC based on the beta. Maybe they've changed it. Maybe they've rolled yeah. back how well the controller feels on the PC. But I'm telling you, hand cannons felt better, aiming felt better, snipers felt better. The game felt more like Destiny 2 or Destiny 1 than Destiny 2 on the consoles. Mm. And it's it's really bizarre because it's What's not the release date being the developed. It's not being developed by Bungie. It's being developed by help me out, Gary. Vicarious Visions. Vicarious yep. Visions. It's very strange. It's very strange. They did and, and also the also, they just patched another game. I can't think of it right now, but it was an amazing game that they patched, like uh, or uh, ported over. Sorry, I can't think of the game right now. Damn it, it's bothering me. Uh, you know what, guys? I don't know how well this PC will hold up. I probably have to run it on low settings, but I think I'll grab it on PC. I don't want to be left behind again. <laughs> I mean, we might be talking out of our asses. It might be that when it plays, they've they've you you know aligned the sandboxes. And it feels like the console, um, but the beta felt really, really nice. Like it felt, it felt great. Um, the other thing as well is that I feel it will be a, a great experience for PC players that have completely ignored it on console because they're going to have less time to wait in the content drought, whatever you want to call it. You know, with the, I think by the time they hit the end game position, we're, we're like going to be almost in December, which will be you know perfect time for the first DLC. So I think it's going to be a better delivery path. So. Yeah, I think for anyone that's that skipped Destiny so far and is waiting for the PC, they're going to have a great time. They made Crash. Oh, oh really? Yes, yes. Okay, that's what I was thinking that. of. Yep. Yeah. Um, so that's number one. Yeah, what's next, Gary? So next one that I'm looking at um, to mix things up a bit is actually Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Um, and that okay, for me is... On. What's your next one? <laughs> Wow, man. That's actually a really like, good RPG, man. I like JRPGs. I, I like them. I've always liked one, them. I play... one, one was really good, but every gameplay I've seen of two, it doesn't intrigue me in the slightest, even a little bit. Really? I just, yeah. I, I'm a sucker for anime characters. and I, I am too. <laughs> this is this is my jam. He's talking about a different kind of anime character than you, though. Oh, later. okay, okay. He's she was like... wearing a, a, a great busty air, and that was it. I was sold. Um, Japanese yeah. dunks. 
That was it. No, for me, I mean, like, I'm not going to go into it at depth, but Xenoblade uh, Chronicles, not X so much, but Chronicles was a great game. I've played that on, like, three different platforms, like Wii, Wii U, and new 3DS. Um, so I've played the game three times. I love it. I, I like what they did. I'm a sucker for any JRPG, so I'm going to play it, and I'm looking forward to playing a, another big JRPG on my Switch, because the last one I played was I Am Setsuna, um, which is a big JRPG, but it's a different um, aesthetic. You know, it's not full 3D. And it's turned so did you play uh Nino Kuni? Yes. Um oh. Nino Kuni won on the PS3 and it's pissed me off we've never got an HD remake or a PC port because or two um, happened. Two two was supposed to be out on November eleventh and they pushed it. Two looks like ass though. It's it oh, visually my, are you kidding good. me? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> they've killed they killed the pokemon aspect to me Nino yeah Kuni. yes yes which i do not like because that was the that was the 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 force of that game yeah i like collecting the little minions and doing my whole getting my pokemon on and doing all that stuff the <laughs> fact that it's just well yeah it's like that, that's what i played it for and for me it's like i'll buy it i'll play it i, I ordered the collector's edition just because um but you want a tree on your it. desk yeah, I want a music box. Like that ridiculous I'm, yeah, like a little music box. I'm, I'm down with that shit. Um, my third game that, that I'm looking forward to um, is actually Fallout 4 VR, um, which is probably pissed on your parade there, bro, because I know that you're, you're keen on that myself. But for me, Fallout 4 VR will give me a good reason to play a full-length AAA game on my Rift again. Because my Rift, I do still dig out, and I played like virtual reality, like the Rick and Morty VR game, and had a great time on that. Like the fiance and I played that for like four hours, fucking loved it. I've been back in Google Earth so many times. Like I just, I, I, I like Google Earth. What can I say? I've said that so many times um, in VR. But that to me, if I can play Fallout 4, which is a game that I maybe put four hours into total, um, if I could play it again and be inside the wasteland and go exploring it for me, that that could be game of the year for me at least wow. personal game of the year not so, obviously universal and locomotion so does, is part of that correct yeah yes oh okay that's what that's what my question was yeah oh, so are you gonna be able to move good. your character freely or not yeah and, and the good thing about it is it's got the vats targeting system so you get rid of all of that pain of trying to shoot and move in vr you can just freeze time point at the body parts you want to shoot at and then it does it Whoa. i feel like gunplay just plays to vr strength so much better than Sword play. Nobody's really figured out how to do or yes. do sword play yet. That's how you break a TV. Um, sword play should. I feel like it should work on a momentum equals damage system, where the bigger the movement you make, the more damage you do, so that you can't just wiggle your controller in front of you and do like max damage. Um, but nobody's done that yet, or right? they haven't figured it out yet. But Fallout Four. You're going to be immersed in the world of Fallout for the first time. And I was not impressed by that game for the, when it came out. Sure weren't. But playing it in VR and being able to have access to that arsenal in first, you know, in VR, like that. Gary, I think it may not be the best game of the year, but it's the one that I'm looking out for the most because I feel like it's going to be one of the most influential to the future of gaming. Yeah, especially VR world. Yeah. VR and needs it, something like that to really push it. Like if if they don't get it like at the perfect time, if VR could go one way or the other. Just to, as a proof of concept, can you play a game like this in VR? Can you? This is a hundred hour plus game, right? Yeah. Can you do that in VR? Like, can is that like a thing that people can do or are willing to do? Can you it's about wander the wasteland, standing up in VR, or are gamers just not willing to play that way? Is it? Just not going to be a thing. I think this is and a this testing a ground for VR. This isn't a Resident Evil Seven either. Like, there's no, no barrier to entry here. Whereas I hated Resident Evil Seven because I don't like horror games. So it scared pussy. me, and I took the headset off. Yeah, I'm a pussy man. I, I admit <laughs> it. You know? No, it's it's. I tried it. I tried it, and I'm by far not a pussy. But that shit was scary <laughs> as fuck. That shit was super scary. Like no, like you might gotta buy the right diapers and have the right uh, <laughs> diet diet and all kinds of shit when you play that game. Yeah. yeah, you're not a pussy, Gary. The game definitely has its moments, man. I, I sure, just, especially in VR. I love horror, man. I just, oh, I soak it you up. So but Fallout 4, Gary, <laughs> I completely agree with you. This is on my list as well. Just because of what it means to the future of gaming. You know, like, this can be Big proof, deal. proof of concept that this VR works for real games. Or it could be proof of concept that, nope, yeah. we're barking down the wrong tree here. 
So is that your first pick? Have oh, I absolutely. Stolen one absolutely. Of your pick? Well, oh, wow. I think all of my games have been picked. Uh, I'm also on board with uh, uh, Gran Turismo. I'm really what? looking forward to that game because <laughs> it is being released in VR. Uh, I've been playing. I don't talk about it much, but I play a lot of Dirt 4 Rally in VR, and I love it. I heard I heard good things about that. Also, Gran Turismo you can download right now. Start downloading because it's 43 gigs. Just saying. 43 gigs. Holy shit. It's huge. It's huge because the content that you get in the actual game, it's a trial. It it runs all the way to the day that the game drops and everything oh, really? you earn, everything you earn in the game up until then, it'll transfer over to the actual real game. That's fucking so, cool. So for me, uh, virtual reality, one of the best uses for virtuality, virtual reality is driving games. Um, the, being in the cockpit of a car, having a fully realized cockpit, you know, you know, if I'm a Mercedes, I feel like I'm in a Mercedes. If I'm in a Ferrari, I feel like I'm a Ferrari. But also the driving is so much better in VR because you're not just looking at a screen that is in front of you. That's not how you drive. When you drive, mm -hmm. it's you look face. at the apex of a corner and then you turn the car to that. Right? Yeah. You're not, you're not looking straight ahead of you all the time. You're certainly not above the car. It's Driving games are so improved by VR. And Gran Turismo yeah, are some real. of the best driving games. The care they put into the driving model and the tracks and the cars. Uh, having this on PSVR is definitely one of the most exciting things of the year for me. Is this uh, game was, fully playable in VR? Uh, it's, no. It's like a, it's a mode, but everything you unlock in that mode is also transferring over to your career character. So it's like gotcha. the more you play in it, you're still unlocking things. It's not like there's no point in doing it, okay. which is good. Uh, yeah, I mean, so my excitement for that game is purely for the VR mode. I can't wait. I love driving games in VR. Drive Club, Gary, you made fun of it. I played. I bet I played 50 hours of that, and it was bad. Hey. It was not good. Um, <laughs> it was bad. It was. I mean, it do was, you have it was, the steering wheel and the pedals? Because I need to get more into this, because I've got Project Cars um, that I bought for VR. I and don't I played, like Project Cars. I played a bit of it. I actually really liked it. It yeah. felt to me really good. It looked It looked pretty. You it know, I'm not good, a, yeah. I'm not an enthusiast, so to me, if it if it looks nice, I go. You know, I, I'm bad at it. I'm, I spent most of the time driving in the dirt off the track anyway. But it, 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 with the um, keyboard and mouse or a controller, you don't get that immersion for driving. Do you have like yeah. pedals and a wheel and stuff? Um, I do not? for the PlayStation Two, which worked on the PlayStation Three, yeah, and may work on the PlayStation Four. I don't know. Um, the PlayStation but, 4, the it, PlayStation yeah. 4 just released a new Logitech wheel. Um, yeah. It's actually decently priced. I think you get the whole thing with uh, a shifter knob, and they have the clutch pedals already put in. Um, I think it's 280 with with everything. That's a so lot. So it's not that That's bad. A lot. That's 280 is a lot. When you think of like a Thrustmaster wheel, Thrustmaster wheels are they can be like 400 dollars, and all you're getting is the motor. All you're yeah, getting I, is the thing that holds the damn wheel, and then you have to buy really nice pedals and buy a shifter. Like when you when you step up into the sim world, it's a whole nother realm. Yeah. It's like how Gary is with PCs. That's how the sim world is. Like I'd like whole, to get the full setup. Sim world can't be that bad. It's hard for me to justify that. Oh, it's crazy. That. It's really hard for me to justify that. And to me, the headset tracking is really the big draw because being able to look at the apex of a corner, like I said before, yes. is it's so much more realistic. It's so much better. Uh, my last pick is, I also am going to echo uh, Inner Black Ninja here, is Wolfenstein, the new Colossus. Yes. Wolfenstein, uh, the new order, is a fantastic game. I played through that again this summer, uh, live on stream, and I just had a ball playing it. The story is so good, and what we've seen from trailers of the story of the new game, it looks like it's going to take it to a whole new level. Um, I like the shooting, but I really love what they did with the story and and killing Nazis is going to take place in America, and I feel like it couldn't be more topical right now. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like I yeah. I don't yeah. I haven't wanted to kill Nazis in a long time, but I'm really <laughs> feeling it right now. I'm really feeling that need. Let's go out there and kick some Nazi skulls in. You know what I'm saying? Like he's really feeling it. Like, <laughs> really Beastly, like Beastly, did you out. Beastly, did you play one? Yeah, well, I didn't beat it. I did not beat one. Oh man! Like once you get past like the like forty five minutes, like an hour yeah, point of the first one, the beginning is real slow. Yeah, yeah not yeah. to mention what I give props on Wolfenstein for—they're not trying to like 
put added on bullshit into their game for people to buy it. They're like, hey, it's a campaign. Either you like it or you don't, yeah. you know, which is which is awesome to me because I'm all about stories. I want to play a fucking good story, and that's all I'm about, really. It sounds so. like they, these games are very heavy in story. Maybe I should. Uh, oh, give, it's like, super good. I mean, they had fucking Jimi Hendrix in the first one, man. Yeah. Yes. Jimmy what motherfucking do you mean? Hendrix. Oh, fuck yes. Jimi Hendrix. Depending on the timeline you took. If you took a different timeline, you didn't get Jimmy. You mean yeah. they actually had him in the game? Yeah. Uh, yes. Without without getting copyrighted by Nintendo, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, it was I mean, a pretty oh, awesome goodness. moment, like wow. when you figure out who he is, who he's supposed to be, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, but there's what? all sorts of great moments in there. There's the, you know, your first uh, encounter with is it Helga on the train? Yeah. yeah. Is that, that her name? Frau, uh, Frau uh, no, yeah, yeah, whatever. It's Frau Uglick or something. Yeah. When you when you first encounter her and you realize that, you know, she's basically just toying with your life here because she's got all this power. When you, uh, when you first like. Get to explore the home base, and you like meet Max, and you meet uh, all these different characters. I mean, go ahead. When when you dream and go into that the go to old the, school, oh my god! Like one, like way back in the what was that early nineties, right? Yeah, and that game. I love that game, and what they showed in the trailers when they showed that trailer at E three, where they're, they're in the middle of this fucking intense ass <laughs> firefight. And this dude obviously just dropped a tab of LSD, and he sees this little fucking like cartoon character bounce around. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, sold. <laughs> so it sounds like I should definitely go back and play part one. Uh, I highly yeah. recommend anyone highly, who's yeah. a shooter fan, like if, if play that and play Doom. If you haven't played either one of those games, I, I love Doom. That's why I'm buying it again games. on the Switch. Yeah. Yeah. Shush, and shush. It, it feels like in <laughs> Wolfenstein 2 as well, from what I've seen from the two trailers, especially the second trailer. The first trailer was great, but the second trailer was spectacular. I feel like they've taken and, and learned, so Bethesda, or I think it's Bethesda developing it, have yeah. taken and, and learned from the first game and said, right, what did the reviewers enjoy? What did the fans enjoy? Let's just double down on that. Let's go even fucking crazier, more comical, more fun more energetic and i think we're going to get something really special with wolfenstein 2 actually i think oh, you're right shit. and uh like it, it's now come out that this is this is like kind of a plan three part trilogy yes. really yeah i didn't so, know that yeah Thank so you. this is oh like going to be like the middle the middle and you always know the second one is the best one out of the three yep yep back to the future come on now yep <laughs> yep empire strikes wow. back <laughs> Yeah, I heard this that one, shit because it, it was an interview. Not they the said Matrix. about why does it not have Mecha Hitler in it? Because they were like, oh, you had like Mecha Hitler in the old game. Why is it not yeah. there? It's going to be a number they, three. <laughs> they, they said, they, they, where do you go after you kill Mecha Hitler? They said, we've got to save him for the for the finale. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, is that a trilogy? And they said, we're not saying anything, but, you know, expect Mecha Hitler at some point in the franchise. So when you when you get that gun that cuts through the fences, I was like, this is fucking dope. This is amazing. <laughs> this is yeah. some Nintendo shit right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited for that game. Like, the first one was so fucking good. And I had kind of forgotten how how good it was till I replayed it again this summer. And then I was, like, totally on board again. I'm so when, ready for number two. I was I was watching your streams, and that got me more and more hype for two <laughs> every day. Like, I'd come home from work, and it'd be, like, perfect timing. I'd get my, I'd get whatever I wanted to snack on and a beverage, and I'd sit down, and Briar's playing Wolfenstein. I'd be like, shit. I love this fucking game. Some good shit. Wow, I, I definitely feel left behind here. I need to play that game. I, pro I might uh, take some time away from Destiny 2 and, and, and oh, go I'm through that campaign. Don't I'm lie. I'm playing that day lying. for sure. I, I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> I, I'm gonna try, Justin. I can try, can I? You can try. You can try all you want. I, I, I can just try. Like, that's just a drip. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Destiny Two is heroin at this point. If I'm not <laughs> trying to get you know higher light with my first character, I'm trying to level up my second, and it's like I feel like it's a new child I gotta take care of. I feel yeah. I feel like it's it's hit you harder because you didn't play one as much. Like Destiny I played two is my yeah. shit. I played. I play one. I had three characters max, and like now with two, I'm like, do I want to start a second character? Or do I want to play <laughs> do it I on PC? Do I want to do that to myself? <laughs> like, like I'd, I'd rather just start whatever second character I would think of making yep. on PC and play on mm -hmm. PC. You know, yeah. which is where I'm at right now with it. Mm, sure. PC is definitely going to be my main platform. Yeah, Destiny too. Yeah, I actually put, uh, went through. Tried the Nightfall and that level 300 mission from the uh, raid with one of my uh, subscribers. 
And he said, Beasley, I, I used to always play the last of us with you, man. I always wanted to play with you there. And you were always playing that game. I can't believe you're always here on Destiny now. And I told him I hadn't played The Last of Us since this game came out. So, yeah. Guys, I really... got to run to the restroom. I'll be right back. All I'm right. Surprised. I'm surprised this is your first time. Shit. <laughs> and I know he's been fucking <laughs> fucked Fuck that. Right. Got a bladder of monster right there. Yeah. It's, like, it's certainly a good time to, to make the, um, the transition as well because I feel like we can move on to our penultimate topic while well there. You were talking about, you know, how to, I guess – transition to pc and when do i transition what do i do the next topic we were looking at was how can you get more comfortable with keyboard and mouse so people that are looking to make that transition and for people that have moved and play a lot of games on pc how can you flip back and play games on a controller again so i i, I guess to, to kick off the topic there i really really struggle playing shooters on a controller i've got no skill with a with a thumbstick so i'm awful at it really really bad i do play with a controller like i played ukulele i, I completed um that on pc recently and obviously i wouldn't play it with keyboard and mouse i played that all with the xbox one controller and, and really enjoyed it but as soon as you need precision aiming just, just thumbsticks don't do it for me so i really really struggle moving back from keyboard and mouse to controller um so i can completely see where you come from on that like you know do, do you guys find that you find shooters easy with a controller because i know that things like destiny need a metric ton of aim assist to make that shit feel good let me go first pc let me go okay. first let me go, go first ahead, baby. okay so I, I i thought of this while i was playing PUBG. i've been on i purposely played PUBG for a week straight without picking up a controller and i've only played that for a week and i did destiny was the first time i played in a week was today with you beastly so me it's really it, it's extremely fucking hard for me to aim with a controller now that I've played. I've played PUBG and I've played um, – what else did I play? I played something else. Counter-Strike and I played one other game with my buddy Arma. And since playing with PC, with keyboard and mouse, it's really hard for me to aim with a controller now. I don't – and, wow, and like, when I – Dude, dude, when I booted up Destiny, I literally went to my keyboard and mouse when I booted up. I'm like, wait, it's telling me hit X. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's shit. not the way it goes. And dude, I'm I'm seriously, I'm I'm really fucking good at PUBG. I'm a beast with keyboard and mouse. And now when I play with a controller, I fucking suck. I'm horrible. Oh my god. And it, and it, it transfers over. The PVE, P, PvP, I don't care what I'm playing. I play like shit with a controller now, which yeah. is hard to believe. And that's how long have I, you been on this PC tangent? How long have you been doing that? Because I know you used to be like exclusively console. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, PC. I've. I've. I don't own an Xbox anymore. So the, for those of you that don't know, I've. I've had all consoles up until roughly a year ago when I built my PC. I got rid of my Xbox the same day I built my PC. It was around the same time that Microsoft said, "Hey, our games are coming to PC," and I was like, "Well, why the fuck do I own your console now?" <laughs> Damn. <laughs> like every Cuphead, Forza. You have a grin on console. Gary's face. I just every want to game, say, <laughs> yeah, he's loving. Which, which one of us, man? Like, it's one of us. This is this is what I thought of right when they said that. I said, "Why do I own a console of yours, and why would I buy an Xbox One now?" Because everything you're releasing, Crackdown, Forza, uh, Gears of War. Uh, some portions okay, of Halo, if you really care. Why would you play Halo when you have Destiny, which is better? Um, you, you Cuphead, exactly like you said. Uh, State of Decay. All these games are coming to PC. Why do I own an Xbox? I don't need one. So I traded it in. I built a PC. And since then, I've I've slowly, as, as time goes, I've fallen in love with it. You know, like oh, one, wow. of my, one of my one. The only game that I wish would come to something else is Sunset Overdrive. Because that game was amazing, and I I truly do that, that believe that's still the best game on Xbox One, and uh, uh, Ori in the Blind Forest, but that's on PC. So yeah, what 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 the fuck do they have now to offer me? Sorry, it's it's not in the topic, but uh, towards the keyboard and mouse, yeah. <laughs> I, I I'm I'm super fond of keyboard and mouse now, and I've I've been obsessed with. That's why I brought up the whole Zim thing before with you. How do, how does that work, and that, where can I get one from? <laughs> All right, so no, before, let Lucy talk and then I'll get into that. Well, hearing you guys talk about this, it, it's led me to one conclusion. The conclusion is, if you're a console gamer like me, and you you build a PC, which I'm going to do, and you start gaming there, you're going to lose your skill or, or lose your affinity towards playing with a, a a controller. It sounds like that's what what happens, or you become so accustomed to the precision aim and precision controls of a PC that the console doesn't live up. To your expectations anymore 
And so I asked myself, do, do I want to, is that what I want? Do I want to move away from this or is it easier for me to just, you know, it's like Cypher from the Matrix. When he was talking to Agent Smith and he took a bite of that steak, he said, I know it's not real. Ignorance is bliss. Yes, exactly. Sure. And and what, you're, what you said with the whole counsel to controller to what you're doing, the, it's along the lines of that you get more use to the accuracy and to be spot on. And then when you go to a joystick and you're like, yeah, it's not the same. You, you, I feel, I feel like when I pick up a controller, I should be wearing a helmet. N no bullshit. <laughs> That's how I feel. And it's, and it's so, it's so sad that I feel that way. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> And this is this is no this is coming from twenty some years <laughs> of this is coming from twenty some years of this console gaming. I haven't I you know you know Beastly you know you know more than most. Yeah, I haven't yeah, fucked yeah. with a PC until yeah. like a year ago. Yeah, yeah. That's why this this comes as a like a big when we were playing Destiny earlier and you told me that I was like, what the hell happened to him? I'm thinking, yeah. and and so like for, in my mind I'm thinking that there's something I'm missing. Right, I'm playing on a laptop, a, a laptop keyboard. Yeah, that People buy people people buy keyboards to game on. I'm playing on just g generic, fifteen twenty dollar mouse. What is that? Wireless. What is that? Mouse. It's, it's wireless. Mouse. Yeah. yeah. Oh, geez. no wonder why you fucking don't know what PC is about. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to learn sometime. I just I, I went fishing three times. I had to ask questions yesterday too. But right. I mean, that's how you find out. And and so I'm thinking that maybe I don't have the right equipment to even get started, and I need to try some other things. But Yo, at the same every time, every time I talk to Ryan on Air PC, he's like, "When's Beastly gonna call me?" Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're 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 getting things together now, Briar, and I'm definitely going to do that. It's just for the genre of games. Like my my opinion is that it's not all about keyboard and mouse for everything. Like I said, but for shooters. Like, it's a strategy game. So if I'm playing things like, you know, like Command and Conquer style games or like Age of Empires, whatever, you know, Civ, that to me is a keyboard and mouse game. Like League of Legends, like a MOBA, keyboard and mouse game. Shooters, keyboard and mouse game. Platformer, controller game. 100% can yep. get you, yep. you, know, you know, like you say, the side-scrolling shooters, platformers, always going to go for a controller. But why you would ever put yourself through a first-person shooter on a controller is fucking beyond me. Like anyone that chooses to play that on that needs to have their head examined. All right, it's just all right, like, all right. Hold the fuck hardcore. up. Hold the fuck it's up. It's hardcore, Gary. <laughs> it's really hardcore, man. Briar's two beers in. Shit. All right. I I truly enjoy uh, gaming on a console. Uh, there's something about uh, the the controller experience that, uh, as far as I've experienced, the PC just doesn't offer with the mouse and keyboard, and that is speed up. Leaning back on the couch. Yeah, I've seen like these lap boards and, you know, these things yeah. that you're supposed to have on your couch. Fuck that. Like, I look at those. I'm like, man, that's it's $100 for the board. Then you got to add a $150 keyboard to it and a $70 mouse to it. I'm out like 200 some dollars for this thing since I'm trying to balance on my lap in my living room. Looks like you're having uh, breakfast in bed and shit. <laughs> right? Like, come on. <laughs> so that that's a big problem for me. And Good I point. do like I do like to game in my living room with my feet up on my big comfy couch. Um and I have a Steam box to do that. So I do play PC games and I plug a controller into that. <laughs> uh, I have I have plugged a keyboard and mouse into there uh, to play PUBG in my living room. Um, on your Steam box? Like, yeah. Um, and it was, you know, it's a mess. I got like the thing on my coffee table. I'm sitting with my back against the couch, like on the floor with my fucking hands in my <laughs> on the coffee he's, table. He's got like, the dinner tray oh, though. Like, what the fuck oh, am I even doing here right now? <laughs> There's nothing stopping you using a controller on a PC. It's just for my opinion, like why if, okay, the, the scenario you described, I've yeah. done that this, this week. In fact, I've done that. I've got the steam box or the steam link, whatever it is. Sorry. Um, and sat on my sofa, and I've played some games on on controller. You know, the Mass Effect Andromeda I actually stuck back into just to see if it got any better. It, it hasn't. Don't play it. Um, <laughs> but for me, it's like if I'm in that environment, why the fuck am I going into a competitive shooter with my feet up on this just so I can get farmed? Like, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'm not I'm... as competitive as you are, Gary. It's, I'll oh. jump into the Crucible, and I I will just not give a shit about my KD, and I'll be. Just playing. talking about fucking Big Bird for yeah. an hour, like not really giving a shit whether I live yes. or die. Like I'm just having a good time because oh. I'm hanging out with my homies. Like I, 
I under, like sometimes I do get competitive, right? Sometimes I really do buckle down and I really want to just kill fuckers and I mm-hmm. want to win like trials <laughs> of the nine, you trials know, of the nine, yeah. kill fuckers. But sometimes I'm just goofing around. Laid I got, back, yeah. You know, I got dumb weapons, you know, and I'm just trying to like do stupid stuff in the crucible. Maybe I do this all the time, actually, for my YouTube channels. I'll, I'll do a review on just a bad weapon. And I'll spend two, three hours in the crucible knowing I'm going to get my ass kicked because this weapon sucks. I knew that going into it, and I just need clips of it for YouTube. So, like, there is... But for me, the controller does have a place. You know, when I play Cuphead, I don't want to fucking play that on a keyboard and mouse. For sure. sure. I hear you. you. Now, I don't... You know, I just got this from Scuff. They sent me a free controller because... uh, the other podcast I'm on, the Destiny Community Podcast, got sponsored by him. And, you know, we had a That's long conversation. Man. Isn't it? It's really nice. That's fucking we had a long hey, conversation. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Since, since you're on that controller, are they worth the money? Man, money has different values to different people, but this is a PlayStation to, to, controller money, that's shaped like an Xbox 360 controller. It's bigger than a PlayStation controller, so it fits my hands better. It's more comfortable than an Xbox One controller. The sticks are replaceable. It's super easy to do it. It's got the paddles in the back. Um, You can even customize the length of the triggers. Um, It's going to cost you 200 bucks. To me, yeah, I would say it's worth it. $200 is different value to different folk. You know, like play a lot of video games. You play a lot of fucking video games for 200 bucks. You know, it's that's a beautiful controller. I I sit here for four to eight hours a day. Playing video games, so two hundred dollar controllers sounds horrible. <laughs> Be- I don't know if Beastly has a hard on for the controller or for how long you play video games. <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. Let me see the controller again and keep talking, Brian. All right, I'll, I'll Just hold whisper it up for it, you, Beastly. I want to hear. It. I want to hear it softly. <laughs> but to me, I- like a controller, for some instances, for some, and even in a place in a in a first person shooter, for some, for some instances, is just preferable to me than a keyboard and mouse. Yeah. If I want to play PUBG and I want to actually get a kill, it's got to be with keyboard and mouse. Yeah. I, just, I feel add, like a add, controller add, add, add makes me a worst. It just makes me a worse player in general. Like I feel like the tool is not capable of doing what what my skill is is like. You know what I mean? Like my skill is greater than the tool that you've given me. You know, it's it's like giving you know a master craftsman's like a a fucking Fisher Price tool kit. You know, like and that's kind of what it is. You know, you can't build a house with this plastic hammer that squeaks every time I hit the ground with Gary, it. You know, Gary, like, let me let me just say this right. As someone who doesn't, you know, I'm not good on mouse and keyboard. Wilson, someone who's good at both, he said that you know he's playing with a controller and a first person shooters on PC against people on mouse and keyboard. He wins routinely. So I mean that can be a subjective thing. Some people just I'm, might be better, some people than others with a controller as well. I feel like if I was to play a competitive shooter, I might you know lose more than I win, but I, I feel like I would be able to you know. There get was to a the very draw. specific situation happening with the Destiny PC. People didn't know about Destiny, and there was a lot of people coming in that already knew about Destiny, and they were using controllers. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> and we were fucking. Racking the kills up, we were fucking them like Big Bird. Give them, give them, give them, <laughs> give them, give them, two, give them two weeks to learn the game, yeah. and you're gonna have a whole different world on your hands. Yeah, I don't know, you know, like we'll see, we'll see. Um, but there was definitely a very unique situation happening. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we mentioned Zim for at the start. That to me, I, I'm that. Bad at controller that I have to use an adapter. We've been through this before the Zim 4, which just lets me plug keyboard and mouse into my con- consoles. So when I'm playing Xbox or PlayStation, even if it's a game like Horizon Zero Dawn, there was a lot of uh, bow aiming in that. That's not a competitive shooter, but I found that game infuriating to play with a controller. But when I got on a keyboard and mouse and played it, and I enjoyed the game no end. Like really enjoyed, like you know, being able to make those trick shots on on the creatures. So. For me, it's just my preferred style of play, full stop. I cannot play any shooter, anything that requires precision thumb aim with a controller. Can't do it. Mm. Uh, I'm, still working, I, I'm still working on beating that game. Horizon. Yeah, Zelda Zelda done shit in that cereal real quick. <laughs> He'll do that. <laughs> He'll do shit in that cereal. Yeah, well, 
<laughs> it, it's true. Horizon was an amazing game. I, I can't wait for the uh, DLC mm. to drop. But, I mean, uh, what if, DLC if you want to see. No. I don't, no, 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 no November. Is story isn't. Oh, the Zen 4 about? is 130 bucks. It's worth okay. it. Okay, so so uh, this is my question about the Zim Four. Um, when you when you hook that up, do you get aim assist on Destiny? How the fuck does that work with keyboard and mouse? Yeah, you get loads. You would. Of shit. Um, yeah, it, it's and... like a lot of different calibrations you can do, and it's you can set the um, the stick accelerations, the dead zones, etc. And um, if you plug it in natively, it will be really wonky because you'll move your mouse, and then the mouse will like accelerate crazy because it's all it's doing is emulating you tilting your stick, um, and you get near a player and it will slow down. And then you move off the player and it will speed up again. So it's really, really difficult to. to oh, so you're out. a fucking cheater. Is that what you're telling me? You're I a cheater. Know, I will admit that I cheat significantly <laughs> on Destiny. It's the only way I can beat people. Um, but I actually. Hey, you want to hey, hey, uh, do trials? You want to stay up a little bit later? <laughs> yeah, we need you for that, Gary, please. I'm down to fuck, man, but that's that's tomorrow. It's going to be 2 a.m. Yeah, by the time this finishes. I don't know. For me, the Zim, if you set it up right, it can feel close to a keyboard and mouse. It's, imagine your keyboard and mouse. Was, was just really limited on the DPI. Like, you still can't turn quickly because it's as quick as the game will let you turn. So you've still got, like, console limitations. It, it's like if a keyboard and mouse player was playing that, that had, like, a slightly remedial keyboard and mouse player. Um, that, that's kind of how you play consoles, like a slow player. Yeah, I um, think, Justin, you, when you play on a controller, you turn the settings up to 10, right? Like you're, oh, yeah, they can't, they can't get high enough on Destiny for me. So for me, I play at 4. Because it's about as fast as I can process information and be accurate at long ranges. Okay. okay. But I, I feel like the real advantage that uh, that setup would give me is that I would be able to play at 10, have the precision of a mouse. It would be a yep. big bump. Uh, just like that, but... Yeah, yeah that's I mean, what I'm and, and there's slight things like, you know, you can move, jump, and shoot, and aim. Everything you can do with a scuff. You can like be reviving or picking up stuff yeah. while still turning and shooting. It's it's just effectively like playing a keyboard and mouse shooter. Hmm. But yeah, it's I'd, I'd recommend it. One hundred and thirty dollars, in cheaper my opinion, than a scuff. cheaper than a scuff, um, and it works on any game and any console. And you, it's not just keyboard and mouse. You can plug in like a Wiimote if you want to. Anything, what any. Input wait, devices. wait, what? You can plug in a fucking Wiimote? How does that work? Right. He um, his interest. Look at his eyes. You gotta it, put candles. You gotta put candles is, on the TV and shit. No, it's just all it does is it's a an, it's a processor. So it takes the signal from one device that you're using and converts it into the signal process of another device. Oh, so there's so, all kinds of motherfuckers out there cheating, huh? Plenty of cheaters. <laughs> uh, motherfuckers. In Overwatch, they actually Overwatch is like trying to figure out how to like Ban get it. them out of the game for on PS4 and Xbox. Yes. I commend them for that. I've done it in Overwatch, um, and to be honest with you, Overwatch it, it, it is a big advantage because you can play a precision McCree, like you can play McCree as you would play it on PC. Um, but you're also limited by the fact that Overwatch console doesn't feel like Overwatch PC because it's got a hard 60 frames um, lock, and it's also V-synced, so there's delay on input. So it's it helps, but it's it's not it's cheating, but it's not game breaking cheating. So how so, so how many other sneaky motherfuckers are out there doing this shit? Oh, is there a lot? There's a ton. Loads of us. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call everybody that kills me a person who's using a Zim then. It helps. <laughs> All everybody I play against in trials must be Zim players. Oh yeah, they, they are definitely in trials. <laughs> Fucking Probably DDoS is me too. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a DDoS <laughs> Smack you down. I'm blaming everything on me sucking. <laughs> yeah, my my mouse has a DDoS key set up. <laughs> It's this one right here. Instant, which, Instant which, DDoS which, the enemy team right there. All of them. <laughs> I think we've got the most important topic to finish on. This one is the this one is that definitely everyone... the most important. And, and back by popular demand, we're going to keep this ball rolling. Uh, Revolver Decides, mm. the, new, the new segment of our show where the Revolver team gets together and decides definitively together on a particular topic. And today's topic is who... Would you marry, kill, and bang? And in which order? For the Destiny Vanguard Leader edition. So these Big are the Bird, Vanguard Elmo, ones. Bert. That's next. <laughs> I feel like so, Revolver Decides needs a theme song. Can we go and get like by uh, next week? We might need, like, I think you we might need a be jingle. right. A little jingle, a jingle for Revolver Decides. We need a jingle for Revolver I like that. Decides. Okay, right, if if you can implement it during the show, I will. Justin, are this. 
We have to before the oh, segment I, I, can end. I, I listen. I, I listened to that bullshit PS4 one. <laughs> By the way, that's <laughs> nonsense. You guys are fucking crazy. I'm just Yo, saying. I fought against that. <laughs> we got the SNES. We got the SNES. He, yeah. he fought for the 360. Yeah. Fucking Justin. PS4 garbage. No, no offense. PS4 I did it under duress, Justin. Great. I did it under duress. Super I know. PC, you heard PS4 and your eyes lit up. <gasps> yeah. I can vote for a Sony console. <laughs> he, was, he was trying to tell his wife to come in the room, make another kid right quick. <laughs> Come here, Kate. Come here. Underneath the desk. <laughs> All right. So the rules are, for anybody who uh, isn't familiar, we have a decision to make. And the segment cannot end until the decision is unanimous. So we have to agree on who to marry, fuck, or kill. <laughs> Zavala, Ikora, or Aid 6 from the Destiny series. Oh my Gary, God. I feel like you should start this one up. Right, I think there's no easy choices here because I think they all bring their own advantages to the table. It, now, it is easy choices. K six would be a fantastic date. You know, he'd take you out and you'd be laughing the whole time. It'd be so cool. You just want to touch his his beautiful beautiful horn um, as much as as you could. Zavala, he's got like strong masculine blue arms that he could just wrap around you and make you feel like you know that's just daddy hugging you right there. And yeah, you know, the strong, <laughs> booming voice of definitely Lance want Redikers. a spoon with Zavala, right? Oh yeah, man. He's Could the you big imagine, spoon. Though. You don't try and big imagine? spoon Zavala. He's taking that position. Yeah. Could you imagine Zavala <laughs> like a, behind like a, you? He's a power top. He's a power top. Yeah. <laughs> Zavala behind you with the fist of havoc, just just pounding. Um, you know, it's just that's that's a that's a strong male figure that I think I need in my life. You know, imagine like. The, you have to go out. All of us here are, 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 are men. Uh, yeah. I'm going to hazard a guess and say we're heterosexual men. And you've got that relationship where you have to be the strong provider. You know, you have to protect your significant other. Wouldn't it be nice just once to have a big, strong man that could pick you up in his arms and look after you? I don't know. For me, that's that's a big weight off my shoulders that I've carried all these years. And Zavala could bring that to me. So I'm making the case I would marry Zavala right now. Okay. You know? All right. So you're marrying Zavala. This is me. I'm going to marry Zavala and I'm going to have that security blanket. You know, if I get in trouble, I can ring up my boyfriend. I can ring up Zavala. You know, Zavala's going to come in. Gonna this. I don't have to, you know, there's, a, there's, there's, there's noise downstairs at night. I can lean over and be like, honey, Zavala, downstairs, you know, and he's like guardian and, you know, goes down there and does that shit, you know, handles it. That, that to me is a, a no brainer. Now, Justin? I'm stuck because. Well, I'm just gonna say I'm I'm stuck with who I'm gonna marry with, fuck and, and kill. Oh, God. You know I'm gonna pass this over because I'm I'm marrying Zavala, but you know you guys might disagree. Uh huh. Okay, so who you're gonna who you're gonna fucking kill? I'm passing it. I'm letting you guys. Oh, you're not you're not even hazarding a guess. Beasley, I feel like you he, got you got some strong words to make right now. Man, don't 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 follow this UK clown. All right, <laughs> we do things differently in the fucking US. Shit. <laughs> Fucking Zavala. I'm always the power top. Anyway, my thoughts on who you'd marry, fuck, or kill. All right, so you'd have to fuck. You'd have to he, fuck Kate he said, 6. He said you'd have to fuck. We're American. You'd have to fuck. <laughs> you'd have to fuck Kate 6. Now, Kate uh -huh. 6. Is that all he a, deserves? Got a great person. Yeah. Uh, he got a great personality, always cracking jokes. And you don't want that around you all the time because there's nothing like a jibber jabber constantly in your face talking shit. So you want to fuck. Kate no, Six, Kate one Six time. talks right during that movie. Right in the <sighs> middle of that movie. The climax of the movie, the, all the tension, you're fully immersed in that movie. Yep. Kate Six over here cracking jokes. Yep. So look, you get away with fucking Kate Six once. <laughs> and then the guilt of fucking another male goes away because in your mind you it's say... a male, he's an exo. Yeah, yeah it's a male a exo. It's a, it's a fucking robot. So yeah. it's not like, you, you know, Zavala, you, you gotta... You fuck Zavala... You're going to be at home, you know, washing yourself up and, and, and gargling and bleach. Yeah. You're going to be in a lot of a world of hurt. <laughs> you're, you're, getting, you're, you're having all kinds of cushions and shit to sit on. And yeah. All kinds of painkillers are popping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zavala uh, and, and give you all these uh, pharmaceutical meds to keep you sedated through the pain. So K6 is who you fuck. Zavala gets killed because, like I said, there's only one power top in my bedroom, and I can't relinquish my manhood for some blue motherfucker. 
Uh, and thirdly, of course, you marry a core because you're heterosexual males and you want to see what she looks like when she starts growing her fucking hair. No Easy. way do you marry Ikora Ray. What the uh, fuck yeah, are you doing? Yeah, fuck her. Fuck that bitch. No. Well, Why if you, you, if, if, Why not? If, if, you, if you marry her, the fucking comes with it, man. That's some self-righteous, sanctimonious asshole. That's the girl you avoided and dodged. That's like the, the near hope, miss man. that almost happened. No. It, Savala's like the man... Ikora is like every <laughs> crazy ex-girlfriend who thought she knew everything and was right on Man, everything. I, I feel like I'm with Gary on this. Like, I can't live with Ikora. It, she does feel like that crazy. Just her like her her crisis that she has in Destiny 2 is like, I don't want to deal with that bullshit every day, man. And, man I and need she, a woman she who's... throws Nova bombs as soon as she gets pissed off, too. You see what she man, did yeah, that man. shit? She said, you want to get Nova yeah. Ikora seems I, I Cora seems like a like a like a bitch with a big family. Got like sixteen brothers that'll all yes. come get your ass. <laughs> yeah. The warlock orders, man. She's gonna she's gonna Imagine the kind of magic she could do for you after you get married though, Gary. Beastly, I understand no. your attachment to being heterosexual, but I think in this situation we might have to and, look past that. Damn yeah, you it. might have to you might have to spread them cheeks, homie. No. <laughs> <laughs> and who could look after you better than Zavala? You looking no in marriage? You're looking for a strong partner, right? That's gonna protect and bring home, you know, and support and yeah. be there. Solidarity. I think Zavala is that man. He's dependable. And He's not dependable. be crazy. I see. I <laughs> and, and you make you make your titan in Destiny, right? And Zavala's like, yeah, you still ain't bigger than me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, well, you're a titan. You, you ain't shit. Yeah, he's little, like the king of the titans. Short for a titan. I gotta look at these. <laughs> the, I gotta look at some of this chat. I, I'm dying to know Look, what, what I'm saying. I, I would saying, never like, pick. I would kill Akor because she gives me all my fucking doubles, and she doesn't give me anything good. So she should die for sure. Okay. She she gives me all the nonsense. Dave security Dave security said Akor is gay anyway, isn't she? I don't know. She seems she very stern. She, she, she seems seem, very stern. She must not I want the, the dick because she's giving me doubles. I haven't. Yeah, I can. haven't. I haven't looked up Akor's sexuality. I think for the purpose of this, gender and sexuality is, <laughs> it, it, it is irrelevant. I think yeah, in this, in this purpose, I, I think you're right, Gary. I think you're right. I think it's what we know coming this, in. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm taking the, the pork sausage from Zavala throughout this. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's happening. <laughs> Titans always bring home the sausage by black beards. Beard actually, here. actually the, you know, there's actually a, th there's an argument to be made, actually, that you fuck Ikora and you kill Cade Six. Yes. Right? Now there's a there's all you might. How is this a quick yes? You've been uh, this is pre because, I don't because, know. Because because if when you're married to them, they don't fuck as much, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're yeah, beastly, yeah. then you have babies and babies and babies and babies, you know what I'm saying? Twice a day. Zavala. Twice Zavala, a day, can, babies. Twice, <laughs> twice a day. Zavala, <laughs> Zavala, you could get away with the kind of like, you know, begrudging hand job and once a year on his birthday, oh, you're married yeah. to him now. Oh. He's gotta just look after it, you know? And then, and just buy Akora. him buy buy him lotion for every gift you ever give him. Just buy <laughs> exactly. him lotion, hand lotion, <laughs> Jergens. Like, like uh, what the hell's that utter bomb? Get him an utter bomb. <laughs> and, and 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 he wants you, right? You don't want him, so he's going to be buying you nice things all the time. He's going to be taking you out, treating you right. You know, he's got to work for it. Meanwhile, you got work for it. meanwhile, you got your side piece. Yep, Ikora. Yeah, and right, Ikora. He's a crazy bitch. I'd not want to marry Icora. Man, this really breaks but, my rule, though. Don't stick your dick in crazy. Like, it yeah, is a but, bad idea yeah. in every circumstance. <laughs> Imagine, right? What if we get rid of him? It's okay. There's, a, it's a, there's a, a saying, and I apologize, but the crazier the bitch, the sweeter the puss. I've heard that many a time. <laughs> it sounds uh, like American saying. That, that's American as hell, ain't it? It is. It's an American term, but let me tell you, in my travels, I found that to be the exact opposite. No. So, the, the the girls with the bad puss end up getting crazy because nobody likes it. You find you, you a good watch, girl. She gives you got that I, gold mine, Niagara Fall, brother. I feel like you right now I you know your wife is watching. <clears throat> and that's influencing what you're saying. <laughs> the text like hi, yeah. no, hi Kate. <laughs> she screamed, <laughs> you will find no mercy in me you. and jumped up in the air and just threw that Nova bomb. You know she's riding deep. You know that that's it. So I think Ikora is a freak. I think that, and also, you can, every time she gets self-sanctimonious and stuff, you can look at her in the same way you look at Big Bird and say, I've hit that. You know, <laughs> you just take her down a peg there. Just, 
Take that was down. beautiful, Gary. <laughs> Just be like, yeah, of course you know everything. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, every time I look at Akura, all I'm going to think about is Big Bird. Thank you. That's it. Right, Cade 6. The reason I'd say kill Cade 6 is he's there stealing your thunder, making you look bad. He's that one guy that's always got the funny joke at the party. He's the one with all the attention, all the looks, everything else there. You know, he's making, you know, you're jealous because Zavala always looks at him at the party and wishes he didn't make that mistake in high school and knock you up. You know, and so in my opinion, Cade 6 is a threat. You know, you want your side piece like Cora. Definitely. And Cade is the only person that could do that. Also, he's a robot, so there's no murder. You can legitimately kill him, and it's just like smashing a hard drive up. All right, you guys got my wheels turning. I mean, I I, I don't want to kill Cade. Cade's Nor you, don't you have, point. You have everything he's ever said or thought of on a hard drive somewhere, so it's okay. It's not like he's really actually dead. I, like, I am down. I, I I am fully on board. Mary Zavala. I think it's the clear choice here. You don't marry the crazy girl, and definitely don't marry the attention whore. Right? Don't marry Katie. You don't marry Icor. No doubt about it. So yeah, the but question Zavala, is, Zavala you, has a really just kind of slow conversation. I mean, what do you do on downtime talking to talking to Zavala in your living room? Kate you don't have no choice. Laughing all fucking he just, day. He just he Zavala's just force feeds you the dick. <laughs> <laughs> Zavala's not in the living room forcing conversations. Zavala is a strong alpha male. He's out cutting yeah. the yard, cleaning the gutter for He's you. He's not bringing home the, the bacon. Ju- He's not sitting home in the living room watching Netflix and chilling. He's out bringing <laughs> home the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Zavala strikes me as he'd be sitting down in his armchair for all of three seconds and he'd just sit there and go, That's so stupid. I haven't hung those paintings, have I? That, that ceiling needs paint. You know, he'd, he'd be a guy that's you know, constantly I feel like You know, I feel like the ceiling, it should be about eight inches taller. I'm just gonna lift yeah. this thing. <laughs> hey, where? Why ain't the sweepy robot in this joint? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Sweeping robot. Yeah, the sweepy he, robot. He's just in the corner watching while this is going down. That's kind right. of just sweeping away, <laughs> just watching this shit. <laughs> he's cleaning. He's just, he's just watching. <laughs> I, I feel like Zavala is the clear choice for Mary. He's the clear choice. Mm. Like if you have a bad day. He will protect you in his bubble of love. That's love? <laughs> just shit. Just, have you ever wanted to be encased in a bubble? I mean, he can make that a reality. Yeah. Right? Done. You're it's here with me. a clear choice. Don't worry. Daddy's home. I, you know what, The guys? only choice is, do you want you fuck Cade or Ikora? And my opinion is, you got to kill Ikora. Don't stick your dick in crazy, man. You just don't do it. It's a bad idea every time. The ba- it always ends up. fucked that's up. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that? who I got, that's who I got. That's how I got the strange business from. Was was Cade? That's all I'm saying. Strange business, Cade. Oh, makes sense. De- definitely got to be giving him something. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hey, I can't believe this. I can't believe you fucking Cade. Gotta fuck Cade. All He's my gonna world. be the most fun to go out with. You bring him out of the town, you're gonna have a blast that night. Go out with Ikora. You might have a good time. You might end up with a crying mess on your hand. You have no idea what that night is going to bring. You go out with Kate, you're going to have a good time every night. I think put a couple of a couple of drinks in Ikora, and you'll yeah. watch that facade melt away. I think but you put a couple of drinks in Ikora, and she might be on the dance floor dancing with some other dude. She might be in the bathroom crying her fucking eyes out. You have no fucking idea what's going to happen with that girl on a daily basis, especially if you add liquor to this. And that, I mean, to I mean, me, I mean, is eternal. That's that's the unpredictability you want. <laughs> I you want, never know. Look, she comes home, I'm she's not surprised. I've got crabs. Piece, oh. I want to have a good time. <laughs> I am trying to get away. I am trying to get out of there and have a good time. I do not want to be dealing with the drama. I want yeah, to be out there had, having hey, a blast. If you had Cade as your side piece, you'd constantly come home and compare Zavala to him, and you wouldn't be happy in your home life because you'd be like, I wish I could have more with Cade. I think but Zavala's be bringing home that bacon. He's mm, also not Kate. funny at all. He's yeah, a he's dull really dude. Not. Super, super Yo, stupid. Zavala hi, hi, is, home, he is providing <laughs> that stable home that you need. So that you can do all sorts of dumb shit with Kate on the weekends. And can you imagine what your Christmas ornaments will look like? Like your, your yard decorations. You drop a few orbs in the front yard, make a bubble, have the kids singing, you know, Christmas tunes. Yeah, I man. just, I've, I've never thought, I wonder how, you know, Kate 
gets down. Whereas Ikora, you know, there's always that, that question, you know, what's, what's going on under that warlock dress? Yeah. There's, there's that, I mean, I, I feel like Kate is a robot, so you can just install like a uh, flashlight and you're good to go. <laughs> it's an upgrade. That does just make hold, sense. Hold this, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like, I, I get your point. I, I hear you on yeah. Cade being a good date. I hear you. But I don't think he'd be a good lay. I think he's all talk. I think he's going to lay there like a robot. I think it's just going to be, you know, a sack of potatoes. I think we're going to see no movement whatsoever. Oh, I, I definitely think Akora is going to be the better sex. Yes. The problem is and that's the all I want. drama. Drama is just going to be... It's just going to be too much. Yeah. You got to hold down life with Zavala at home, right? Yeah. Zavala... You know, Ikora is eventually going to tell Zavala what's happening. Like, no doubt about it. <laughs> that chick is going to get crazy one night and call Zavala and be like, we have been fucking since Destiny 1. <laughs> Three years. We've been doing it old school since vanilla. <laughs> it's the beta on first light. That's it. Right? Kate 6 keeps that shit quiet forever. Never tells a fucking soul. This cracks a joke when uh, Zavala walks by. Yeah. That's it. <sighs> I, don't know. I don't know if I could kill my crazy bitch though, my crazy bitch crush. Ikora. You're asking me to put a bullet in her head. That's some real I'm, shit. I'm with you uh on keeping Ikora, Gary. You feeling Ikora? Yeah. You're just looking for a woman somewhere. You got you're willing right. to you're willing <laughs> to take, take Zavala. You got a robot. Like Mary, I'm at least it's gonna stick almost it in. as good. It's almost like as fact, good. You're, you're taking prison rules for Zavala. <laughs> what does that, that mean? You think, like, <laughs> Oh, it's, it's engineered to feel as good as it can. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I'm feeling like this really, if anyone from the Bungie staff are listening, this could make a great DLC. <laughs> <laughs> gonna... In fact, there was a topic about what um, Chris Barrett wanted in the DLC. If anyone could clip this and send it to him, I think it's pretty much exactly what we want. Justin, talk to me, buddy. What, what are you thinking here? I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep Icorus the side piece. You gotta kill Cade. For one, he's a robot. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't even know how you get down with a robot. Um, and <laughs> upgrades, upgrades. There ain't enough upgrades, upgrades but to make him a fucking human. Okay. You can, get a, you can get a voice changer. You can get a face overlay that sits on top of his face. Not Cade six, then. You're making yeah. him someone yes, he completely is. different. He's you not Cade six with a flashlight does. either. You, you it's called to... an add-on. It's yeah. DLC. Shit. DLC. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't want no more DLC. Okay, shit. We want like know. free patches and shit. We want I like mean, updates. <laughs> when I, when even with a flashlight, if I'm looking at Cade Six, it's not going to be easy to, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm, I'm getting a little older. <laughs> the equipment, you know, it, it doesn't spring to action as fast as it used to. Yeah. Did you know yeah. it's going to be yeah, cracking it's not, jokes. It's not an attention just for no reason. Oh, yeah. You got to kill, you gotta, you gotta kill Kate because if that happens, he'll, he'll be cracking jokes at you, Briar. You see Briar Rabbit on the next episode of Snapped. Trying to fuck and you can hear Nathan Fillion going, is it in yet? Can't feel anything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that to me is just going to kill the mood immediately. And I, you know, I think. Yeah, Ikora's gonna gonna definitely float my boat. She's she's the side piece. So I've got the dependable strong man in Zavala, and I think I shoot Cade with no guilt whatsoever for just being too cool. You know, sometimes you just gotta take the motherfuckers out. It's like that. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> All right, I am willing to go. Zavala. Side piece Ikora. Yes. Kill Cade. Everybody I've always decided. I'm I'm agreed. We'll comment and chat. Agree. He can't do thing. it. He can't marry Zavala. He has to. He's got no choice. Revolver decided. And it's not because I'm racist. I think blue people are awesome. Avatar was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, that would be. I just a... don't want to see no blue dick, man. Technically, for all of us here, it would be an interracial wedding. Just saying. <laughs> How would you know if he had blue balls? I'm just saying. <laughs> you wouldn't know. Every day is a bad day, Gary. Every day is a bad day. Would a dick look any better if it was shaded blue? Oh, God. 
I'm just saying. Uh, Fuck you, Beastly. But, but I'm not going to sway you guys, and Re- Revolver decides. So oh, shit. I'll have to swallow my pride. That's all I'm going to and swallow. That's all you swallow. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> all right. So Revolver decides. Mary, Mary Zavala. Buckeye Cora. Kill Cade. Killing Cade. We've killed Cade Six. We've killed the most beloved character in Destiny because we didn't we, want to fuck on Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking sore right now, dude. Oh, and God. that, guys, will be in the DLC too for Destiny coming in the spring. <laughs> Destiny Tower Life. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> it sounds like a game I'd play, to be honest. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slapping draws. What a night! Just hanging out in the tower, just waiting to fuck. That's kind of the the game. Yeah. All right, I think that's gonna wrap this show up. <laughs> Yo, Mr. Black Ninja, where can people find you? On Twitch. That's it. That's, that's it. it right now. On on Twitter too. I post a lot of random dumb shit on Twitter. So um, it's nothing weird about the spellings, right? It's just inner black. Yeah, ninja. inner black no ninja. Yeah, but... none of that fucking crazy horse shit. Yeah, blacks and hope... cap, but I think it comes up no matter what. So <laughs> we hope to have you back soon, my friend. It's been too long, and uh, like I said, guys, inner black is an alumni of our old show, BC Thoughts. And uh, we are very, very thankful to have him on today. He brought a lot of, of, of work. He put a lot of effort in uh, and basically took care of half of the show, show himself. So we, are, we really appreciate you, Inner Black. Uh, if you guys would like to become thank a part you. of the hey, show. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having we, me. We, for sure. we love you, man. If, if you guys out there in the Ethernet, the Internet, or podcast form would like to become a part of the show, uh, submit your topics to revolvergamescast at gmail.com. We're trying to formulate a special sh- a show that's just from the fans. So if you guys want to send in your own topics, we're going to one day down the line, hopefully very soon, do a show with six topics, all chosen by you, the wa- the viewers and uh, the listeners. So yeah, definitely send say- in. I feel like a, a shitty host, man, because we've been talking before the show. And, and for the people who've been sending in stuff, we're not ignoring the, the Gmails. You know, we, we have seen them all that have come in. Um, we've got three or four guys that have sent in multiple stuff. I mean, we, we've got a, a whole load of you in there and we can't go through you all by name, but we're hearing it. We're seeing it. Please don't think we're, we're missing it. And and as BC said, we're planning something special with it. But um, Send them in. Send them in. Keep, send, keep sending them, guys, because we, we love reading them. And some of you guys are fucking hilarious. You know, you yes. should be hosting shows. Yes, for sure. Super Dan. Um, Super Dan. Also, if if you uh, disagree with who marry, fuck, or kill. <laughs> um, let us know on Twitter. Don't forget to use the hashtag, fuck them like Big Bird. Or, or Blue Dicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm, I'm happy for any of these hashtags to start trending. <laughs> I would love fuck them like Big Bird to trend on Twitter. <laughs> start trending? <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. That would be the greatest thing in the history of Twitter. <laughs> 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 he would take so much pride in it too. You could oh. see him just sitting and stewing in his chair. <laughs> Every time I saw it, can you imagine? Oh. Hashtag fucked him like Big Bird. <laughs> fucked him like Big Bird. You guys became a new happen. saying. It just entered the American lexicon. Man, what happened to them? I got fucked like Big Bird. <laughs> just that, you know, just that's it. It's Did you new... see the Jaguars Patriots game? Oh man, they fucked up like Big Bird. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. Oh, I hear you, you, wrote, you know, I hear you wrote your car off the other day. You went into the back of a semi. What happened, man? That car is fucked like Big Bird. <laughs> Gone. We've given you guys a plethora of different ways you can use this hashtag. Start using using it and making your own hashtags today. <laughs> fucked it like Big Bird. Oh man. Make it happen. <clears throat> Make it happen. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> we'll try harder next time. <laughs> we won. No, we won't. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for hanging out. Bye. See ya. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hashtag fucked it like Big Bird.